आई थिंक एम आई ऑडिबल दिव्या आई एम ऑडिबल टू यू या 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 यू आर ऑडिबल हेलो हेलो या यू आर ऑडिबल ओके ओके ग्रेट हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू टुडेस सेशन टुडे इज विल बी द यू नो वन डे सेशन फॉर जावा uh where we are going to cover from very basics to very advanced uh, we will cover almost all the concept of java this will be 3 hour uh, you know session which will be you know uh, taken by dibbe so and as you have supported in c++ github and aws series i we we are thinking that and uh, that you will support this initiative too okay so i hope that you know everyone have joined till now and you are very excited to learn the java concepts so over to you dibbe and you can continue with the session guys uh, before starting the session i would like to you know address few things that uh, you know there will be no certificate for this particular series because th- this particular session as this session is only you know for your ncm exam most of you are facing doubts in uh, in java that's why we have arranged these types of sessions second thing is that and uh, uh, that uh, uh after this this uh 3 uh, hours uh, you will not get this this will not the this will be not the uh, recorded session this you can watch this session live only okay so stay uh, till 3 hours and you will get lots of lots of new things about uh, you will learn lots of new things about java okay so i think let's let's start the session dibbe and okay yeah thank you for joining us okay so uh, guys can uh, all of you give me a quick uh, you know confirmation if i'm audible and if my screen is visible in a while wait yeah so So I hope my uh, screen is visible to all of you, and okay, cool. So I'm okay. so uh, welcome to the series, and let's start. This uh, series is going to be called Sprint Java because, of course, it's going to be a fast-paced uh, crash course, right? So Sprint, and uh, so I I hope you guys already know uh, what we are at dot question mark and what our vision is, and this course is going to be mentored by me, uh, and some prerequisites there are going to be none. So let's directly jump into the course, and uh, we'll understand the concept. Uh, you know, कर करते साथ ही हम लोग you know understand कर लेंगे concepts. So this is a very uh, boring piece of text which I have copy pasted here, and this uh, piece of text has been taken from Java white paper. Now the reason मैं आपको Java white paper दिखा रहा हूँ, it was written in 1995. Uh, guys, that is the year in which uh, Java was you know launched into the world. So the creators of Java. लॉन्च जावा विथ अ पर्टिकुलर टैग लाइक आई मीन जब कोई भी चीज़ लॉन्च होती है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई फोन लॉन्च होती है एपल एक इवेंट करता है जिसमें वो एपल की बेस्ट चीज़ें बताता है आई फोन की हर एक कंपनी अपना इवेंट्स कराती है राइट सो जब जावा लॉन्च हुआ था जावा को लॉन्च करा था सन माइक्रो सिस्टम्स ने राइट जावा वॉज लॉन्च बाई सन माइक्रो सिस्टम्स एंड वेन इट वॉज लॉन्च दिस इज एग्जैक्टली द टेक्सट दैट दे हैड रिटर्न इन अ पैराग्राफ वाई डू वी नीड जावा वॉट इज द नीड टू लर्न जावा so uh, let me tell you in a brief what is described in this page so basically uh, when java was launched uh, when java was not launched before that the two languages that were the most popular ones were c and c++ python existed but not very popular back then so um back in uh, back when c and c++ were the only popular ones there there were many problems because c and c++ code guys as we already know uh once written it is not going to run everywhere it only runs on a particular system on which it is compiled uh, we'll look at those problems and other than that there are many different problems like for example if you want to develop a program that can run on different hardware architecture that can support multiple operating system that can support lot of different graphical user interfaces as well and also can be used for web development you know client server environment uh these are just some big terms that were used during the marketing of java but these are true so in order to address all of those problems which existed back then java came into the picture and hence this is in a paragraph how java um how people who created java have described it you can reference the java white paper doc it's a 75 page book uh, i'll share the link with you guys in that you can learn what exactly are the benefits of java over different languages so 
will not be doing lots of theory will directly focus on the uh, you know particular concepts and coding that is required for your ensembles so <clears throat> Java, uh, in Java programming language, these are some of the top six benefits that I have picked. Okay, so let's uh, go through that once very quickly. So Java is basically object-oriented programming, and it is still dead simple. What that means? Object-oriented programming का सबसे बड़ा benefit ये होता है कि you can actually make it, you know, reliable. Your code is reliable, and other than that, it can actually be representing real-world objects and coding that, making that scalable is much more easy. We'll see. We'll uh, do object-oriented programming uh, today along the course. Other than that, in Java, developing the code is much faster because Java is interpreted. And uh, what is interpreted? Uh, coming to that in a while. It is a translator. We'll look at that. So this entire development phase, like you know, writing the program and accessing it, running it, all of that is much faster in Java. And the reason behind that is Java is both compiled and interpreted. As the community knows, Python, Python language interpret is language interpreted. Hoti hai. We have heard about C and C plus plus. Those languages are compiled, but Java is one such language which is compiled as well as interpreted. It is done. Uh, it goes through both the translators. And the benefit of doing that, we'll look uh, look at it in a while now. So your applications are portable. As I said, ja anything written is Java. Uh, let me turn on the laser pointer. Anything written in Java is portable. What that means? Once written, it can run anywhere. Uh, you know, once you write your Java program, it can literally run anywhere. It basically follows the concept: write once, run anywhere. And that is, in a nutshell, why Java is so popular because it is portable. So I'll show you a quick demonstration of how it is portable. Before that, just two more points to go. So basically, Java is robust. What is robust? Mm -hmm. What does robust means? Uh, if you guys uh, uh, have already used C or C++, which I did, did a course very uh, not very back, and if you remember during C or C++, one of the uh, you know primary um, errors that you might be very used to is that suddenly your your program is working fine, but suddenly it stops and a choti si error aa jaati hai, um, you know, core dumped or um, yeah, code dump exactly. Code dump is one of the you know very common error that comes in C plus plus. And you know why that happens? Because C and C plus plus में होता है pointers, and pointers जो होता है memory allocation, and इसमें आती है problems because uh, uh, those memories goes unchecked. If you remember, जब हम uh, dynamic या new array you know C plus plus में जब pointers use करते हैं, we have to use free uh, function. Don't worry about if you don't have if I if you have not used C C plus plus. This is just uh, some some place that you can relate to. So in C or C plus plus, there is a common problem that um, the memory goes unchecked. So a lot of times you might be getting the segmentation fault and core dumped. All these common errors. This happens when uh, your program accesses the space which it, which it is not allowed to, and C or C plus plus does not take care of that. It, uh, so let's say you have written a code program. Liya, it is working fine on your computer, but the moment you ship it, your, you, let's say you shell, uh, sell your application. You sell your code to someone, but on their system, uh, after uh, working for some time, it suddenly crashed. So, how do you know that once you write your code, वो आगे safely चल सकता है? You can actually depend on it. How can you be sure about that? So, this is where Java comes into action. It says that Java is robust. Robust basically mean, means ऐसा कोई error नहीं रहेगा कि आपने uh, आपके testing time पे सही चला और बाद में fail हो गया. Java makes sure that whatever you do will Will be you know like persistent. It will always be robust. Robust robust means something that does not uh, fails easily, strong, unbreakable. That is called robust. So C or C plus plus ke comparison mein robust is one of the biggest advantage of Java that it does not uh, you know those errors which are hiding in your code that will not wait till you ship your code or sell your code. It will be uh, detected beforehand and you can easily fix them. So that is why Java is robust. And the reason that it can actually detect the uh, errors beforehand is again relates to the same point that we discussed earlier that it is both compiled and interpreted. And this is another most important, uh, you know, uh, what do I say, perk of using Java that it is portable. So robust and portable are one of the greatest uh, perks of Java. And other than that, these are some, <coughs> uh, you know, theoretical perks like. Adaptable to changing environments, dynamically download code modules. This is how you can basically adapt your code. So rather than doing some more theory, let's now uh, directly jump into how Java is portable, and then let's start coding. So in this diagram, uh, you can see a very simple, you know, representation of some common terms. So you have heard Java. Mein commonly so internally, 
how Java is portable. Let me show you a quick demonstration. Uh, actually, you you guys tell me in the chat. So, जब हम कोई भी कोड लिखते हैं C या C plus plus पे, ठीक है? Where the who executes that code? Can you tell me in the chat who executes the code? Let's say uh, I just open up my terminal, and what I'm going to do is I'll just say C D. Let me see what if I have a C plus plus code written already. Let me uh, okay. Let's write a C plus plus code. So let I go to some uh, repos, and don't worry about this, guys. This is not related to Java. I'm just trying to show you an example where Java, how Java is portable. So let me zoom in a bit, and okay, sorry about that. Zoom in and zoom in again. So I hope it is audible. Exactly. So a lot of people are telling compiler. So uh, can you tell me what does the compiler do? Compiler ex converts the code into machine code. But who actually executes the code? I'm not talking about the translation. I'm asking who executes the code so that the output is visible. You know, after compiling, you get a dot out file. Hai. Hai uh, yeah, loader basically loads the file into the RAM, loads the uh, code execution file into the RAM. But who executes the code? Let's. I I'll show you an example. Let's say I have a simple sa, uh, C program. Likha. I will name it uh, simple dot C. Simple dot C, and I'm not going to write too much C code here. I'll just say include uh, bits, I'll not say bits. I'll say stdio dot h. Don't worry, guys. This is just C. This is just an example uh, to so. This is nothing to uh, do with Java. Let's write here very quickly int main void, and I'll say uh, <coughs> printf. And hello world. I'll just say hello. I'll close this and I'll say return zero and I'll close this and I'll close this. So let me save the code. And now if I just compile this code, GCC is the command that we use to compile GCC compiler. And if I say simple dot C, compile simple dot C. And now uh, I will get a file a dot out. So now when I run this a dot out file. Okay. The moment I use GCC, it means basically a command in simple terms. It means, uh, ये जो, uh, you know, ये जो simple dot C code था, जिसके अंदर basically let me show you simple dot C के अंदर क्या था. I just typed it in. If I say simple dot C, okay. So now inside simple dot C, this basically has this simple content, right? Include stdio dot h और कुछ नहीं करता, बस hello print करता. This is a C code. And after I compiled it using this command gcc simple dot c, this is what exists inside the code. If I say a dot out, because a dot out file produced with it, so is ke andar kuch aisa content hota hai, jo hume samaj nahi aega because this is machine code. So it means it's already compiled. Now what uh, is the problem in this structure? If I run this code a dot out, ठीक है, it's working fine. Hello. Uh, so the problem is, guys, when we run this code. Uh, GCC simple dot C. When we run this line, it is converted into machine language, and the problem is this compilation, this output file that it produces after compilation, will only work on my machine, right? Because it is compiled for my machine. When I say GCC simple dot C, it compiles that code for my machine, and it will only work on my machine. That is the problem. It is not portable. Let's say uh, I want to share this code with you. Then I have to share the source code. I have to uh, share this source code that I wrote. Earlier, this entire this entire source code, but I want to protect my source code. I don't want anyone else to make a, make any change to it. Then I want to share this a dot out because this is compiled and cannot be changed. Now the problem is I cannot share this because it will only run on my machine. Because GCC ne isko mere machine ke liye compile kara, and after that, when I run this code, it's your operating system who executes it. So always keep in mind the operating system is the uh, you know. Final platform which executes your uh, actual code. Now this is where Java is different. In Java, um, अगर किसी चीज को portable करना है, इस चीज पे तो कर ही नहीं सकते because अगर machine code को, अगर final code को operating system ही run करेगा, then obviously it is not portable. It will only work on the specific operating system on which it is compiled. Now to make it portable, Java came up with something genius. Java made something called uh, this. Java, okay. Java made something very a uh, unique called Java Virtual Machine. So, what is Java Virtual Machine? Other than uh, in you know in simple uh, in C, C plus plus any other languages, when you compile a code and then you execute it, your operating system executes it. But in Java, 
there is something in between called JVM. This G, uh, JVM, you must have heard it a lot in your J Java courses. It stands for Java Virtual Machine. So what is this Java Virtual Machine? It basically means this is the parent, uh, you can say the parent function or the parent software within which your code will be executed. So now whatever code you write will not be directly controlled by the operating system. Uh, it will be controlled by the Java Virtual Machine, this thing. So this Java virtual machine is the, uh, you can, you can kind of think, ki, uh, let's say, how do we say, um, <clears throat> let's say you are a person you studying in a school and you are afraid to go to the principal. Some of your friends can, some of your friends cannot, but all of your parents can, right? Parents can go and talk to the principal. So, uh, if you are afraid of talking to a principal, you will ask your parents to go and talk here your parents are work uh, you know can relate to this example as java virtual machine they are they stand in between between you and the principal similarly java virtual machine stands between your code and the operating system nothing no direct conversation can be done between the code and the operating system java virtual machine will do that for you ab iska fayda kya hai java virtual machine ek software hai jo aapki pc pe install ho jayega and iska fayda ye hai ki once the java code is written it can be executed in any system because now it does not depend on the operating system. Ye sirf Java virtual machine ke under execute hoga. And that is the perk. This is Java portable. Because in any system, you install Java virtual machine install kar lo, and uske baad, it can directly execute a Java code. It does not interact with the operating system directly. Beach mein ye hai. It will, uh, it will uh, you know, convert your code into an operating system compatibility. And that is the uh, reason why Java is so portable because Java virtual machine is there, which, uh, you know, kind of acts like a middleware and handles your code. Now, other than that, there are two more terms which are frequently used in Java, JDK and JRE. So what are those? Now, Java virtual machine is just the software that executes a code. Yeah, somewhere in, somewhere in the chat is saying it's an interpreter. Exactly. It's an interpreter. Now, other than that, there are some library classes that you need. Not everything we are going to code it from scratch. For example, if you want to print a simple hello world into the output, we don't know how to communicate with the monitor, how to communicate with the display and how to, you know, uh, pop our message right there. So we will use a class use class. And those library classes are predefined in Java. Java comes with a set of predefined classes so that we don't have to code it from scratch. Those predefined classes, when combined with the uh, interpreter that is Java virtual machine, which executes your code together. They are called Java runtime environment. It is called JRE. So JRE is a superset of Java virtual machine, and it also includes the library classes. Now, other than that, Java also uh, gives you some development tools. Development tools are not normally used. I mean, it's used for application development. It has lots of frameworks like Java applets and some other debugging tools. And all of those are combined together. It is called JDK or Java development kit. So here JDK is the, you know, grandfather subset. You can think like that. It contains everything. It contains JRE and it contains JVM. So yeah, the outer green, uh, this mint colored box, you can think that this is JDK Java development kit inside that lies JRE that is Java runtime environment. And inside that lies JVM or Java virtual machine. So with this knowledge in hand, let's now jump into the code. And yeah, this was the translator. So we talked about the translator, like uh, it is in Java. <clears throat> uh, translator is just something that converts your code, which you have written in a human readable format and uh, prints that out. And, uh, you know, it converts that into machine code that is binaries. So rather than more theory, let's directly jump into the code. So here uh, I have an uh, I, I, I'm coding in uh, <laughs> the ID that I'm using to code is Eclipse. And if you are, if you guys do not have Eclipse installed already on your system, then I would recommend that you go for it. And if you do not have that time right now, then let me share a link with you where you can actually code online. Uh, so give me a second guys, GDB Java. And yeah. So in case you do not have Java already installed on your system, feel free to go to this link and code online. So this is basically an online environment where you can uh, execute a Java code for now to test your environment. Yeah, uh, you can code on Notepad slow, but uh, it's going to be a problem if you 
uh, you know, want to execute it with packages. You have to write really long commands. So I would I would uh, recommend to use Eclipse or uh, the online uh, online JDB. So having said that, let's jump into the code. So first of all, let's understand some basics of Java. Let's do these four basic operations first. I want to make a variable. So I hope all of you are aware about what uh, what what is yeah Visual Studio Code is fine. Any uh, uh, literally any uh, editor is fine. But you know, uh, Eclipse is, uh, just makes it easier to execute a code. IntelliJ will work. Yeah, definitely. IntelliJ is also a good platform. It, uh, it's a complete IDE, compiles and interprets the code. And Visual Studio Code will also work fine. But please don't use simple Notepad because uh, it will be difficult for you to execute the code. You have to re write re really long commands uh, when, you, when we get into object-oriented programming. So let's see. Let's see what is a variable. So what is a variable, guys? Before understanding what is a variable, uh, you know, uh, what is a constant? Uh, what is a constant? Constant means anything that has a fixed value. For example, uh, number 5. So 5 is a constant value uh, in maths. It is a constant value, right? 5 means 1 multiplied. How do I explain what is 5? 5 means anything that is uh, that occurs 5 numbers of time. So some values have their own fixed constant, like alphabet A, it is something that is constant. Its definition will not change. Any numeric value is a constant. Any float, any, any point value is a constant. So there are lots of constants in Java. If I want to print a text or any uh, constant string, then how do we do that? So how to print something in Java? Let's see that first. Print something in Java. And let's do our first classic Hello World program. So in order to do that in Java, what you have to do is you have to write system dot out dot print ln. So with this basic syntax, uh, we can just print anything, anything that we want to print. If it is a string, we just need to provide that within double quotes. In Java, if you want to interact with a string, if you want to uh, tell Java that whatever you're going to write is a string, then you write that within double quotes. If you want to say, tell Java that what you're trying to, you know, what you're going to write is a single character, then it has to be within single quotes. So as I'm doing strings right now, I'll use uh, double quotes. And let's say, I, I'll say, hello from DQ. DQ is dot question mark, that is us. And what I'm going to do here is I'll say, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Also at the end, you have to use the semicolon. So in Java, every line has to terminate with semicolon. And that is how your compiler will know that it has worked fine. And you see what's the error about. Okay, so let's include a basic package also. Import. And I'll say java.util.asterisk. Now, what is this import keyword? Uh, import keyword basically tells Java key, you know, uh, there is something different that I want to do here. And for that, I will need an extra package for which I will not write the code. For example, I want to print something out. For that, I'm not going to write the code. Although for printing, you don't need import, but it's a good practice if you just write this line in the uh, code already. It, it, you know, brings a lot of different uh, packages and pre-written codes which you can directly use in your computer. So if I now hit run, proceed, what's the error? Main not found. OK, sorry about that. That is not a main function right now. So yeah, so we can see that. In our class, I just wrote public class. This is the basic boilerplate that you write in your Java code. And you might ask, why hello world? Why have I written hello world? The reason is, uh, on my uh, left hand side, you can see the name of the code that I have written is called hello world.java. And if you're worrying, ki hello world jo Java kaise create kare, then on your Eclipse, on your Eclipse, you can just uh, right click and say new project. Okay? Just create a new project. Uh, give any name. So I'm going to give it temp because I've already created a project. I'm going to call it temp. So that temporary. I'll say finish and just hit create. So the moment you do that on the left hand side, you on, in your file structure, you can see that there is something called temp right now. And within them, there is a folder called SRC. SRC stands for source. So all your source code has to exi uh, exist within this SRC folder. Now, let's say I want to create a source code. Let's say I want to write a program. So it is a good practice that do not directly put your code in the SRC folder. 
rather right click on it and first say package first create a package and the name of the package can be literally anything uh, i like to write com.dbs home and basically package is nothing very uh, you know extraordinary basically it means ki a package ek folder hai theek hai package ek folder hai jiske andar aapka source code exist karega eclipse mein jab hum create karte hain it looks like we are creating something different or something unique but package in very simple terms means that ek folder create kar rahe hain an empty folder jiska name hai dibya so jo ek ek aur folder ke andar hai com so and how do i know that it is inside a uh, com because maine com dot likha hai so main jaise jaise hi maine likha com dot it means ek com naam ka folder create ho jayega uske andar uske baad maine likha dot dibya so it means com folder ke andar make another folder dibya so or you can just say com it totally up to you i like to write an extended name so i'll hit finish and you can see that within src now com.dbsom is present inside this now i'm going to say right click on that file and i will say new class and it, uh, actually eclipse makes it very easy for you to create a new class you can just say the name of your class and also keep in mind that uh, when you are writing a uh, when you're creating a file when you're creating a class in java it is a good practice that the first letter is capital ठीक है फर्स्ट लेटर कैपिटल करते हैं एंड ये जावा का कन्वेंशन है इट इज नॉट अ रूल बट इट इज अ गुड प्रैक्टिस दैट इज फॉलोड इन जावा दैट द फर्स्ट लेटर शुड बी कैपिटल सो दैट इफ इन फ्यूचर इफ समवन रीड्स योर कोड देन दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज अ क्लास नेम सो आई एम गोइंग टू से लेट्स से व्हाट डू आई पिक हेलो आई विल नेम द कोड जेलो ओके जेलो हो गया इट्स अ नाइस नेम एंड आल्सो यू कैन जस्ट टिक मार्क हियर पब्लिक स्टैटिक वर्ड मीन and you can hit finish so on the left hand side you, on the right hand side you can see that the code has loaded don't save and let's write in jello itself theek hai <clears throat> now uh, this is the basic broiler plate that you need to uh, write in order to do anything in java uh, okay so there is a public class jello now the name of the class should be exactly equal to the name that you have given to your file it is a, a rule that java specifies if this rule is not followed then it will create a problem now this rule has no problem if agar main public hata deta hu to koi problem nahi hai it will work fine main koi bhi naam de du chalega koi error nahi aayegi i can name it hello it is not a problem now but if you declare your class public and you don't name it exactly as the name of the file then it is going to be an error you can see it will say the public type hello must be defined in its own file and the reason is that the reason that java demands that the name should be exactly same as the name of the file is that uh, because when java compiles your code it will generate a class file and it is going to you know create ambiguity if there are different names agar class ka naam hello hai and andar se file generate hota hai jello.class it's going to be a problem and let's see so we have just configured that we have just configured public class jello uh, and we have named it properly अब क्लास के अंदर एक मेन फंक्शन बनाना पड़ता है पब्लिक स्टैटिक वर्ड मेन दाई वी आर राइटिंग पब्लिक वाई वी आर राइटिंग स्टैटिक विल डिस्कस दिस वेरी सून बट फॉर नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट ये कीवर्ड है जो हमको लिखना पड़ता है टू एग्जीक्यूट एनी कोड ठीक है फॉर नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड लेट्स जस्ट एज्यूम दैट दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी हैव टू राइट इन ऑर्डर टू एग्जीक्यूट आर कोड ओके सो पब्लिक बेसिकली मीन्स इट कैन बी एक्सेस फ्रॉम आउटसाइड static basically means that this can be accessed without creating an object or uh, just keep this terms in your mind that without creating an object you can access it we'll discuss it very soon in object oriented programming in a in an hour or so and fir iska naam dena padta hai aapko main now main is important to be written because if you don't write main then the compiler won't know what is what is need to be executed what is the main where to start executing the file so you have to name it main so that the compiler knows okay from here i will start executing sorry the interpreter other than that string.arg is is totally up to you it is optional but uh, this is something that allows us to use command line arguments and in very simple terms that is basically a broiler plate that you need to write in order to execute any java file so let's start with our first program the, the you know the syntax to print something let's print something and the way you i do that is you have to write system dot out dot printlm okay 
system dot out dot print ln and then within common brackets and as as we have already discussed how to write strings i'll say hello world from dq so uh, what this does is uh, basically <laughs> let me uh, remove it from here and Uh, so uh, basically, as you can tell from the compiler, as I told, just told you, Vamshi, um, don't worry about it. I will be telling what is static very soon. We'll uh, make our own static functions and methods. Uh, for now, uh, let's just see what uh, we have. Let's just assume that static needs to be written. If I don't write that, it's going to be a problem because code can cannot be executed. I'll tell the reason for that very soon. For now, let's just assume that static needs to be written. Okay. And inside system dot out dot print ln, I just passed a, a double within double quotes a string, and yeah. So uh, as we have just discussed, classes ka first initial letter hamesha capital hota hai. So just by looking at this line, you can understand that system is a class. Inside that, there is probably some package or a module inside which there exists a function print ln. So this is why naming convention is important so that apka code agar koi bahar se dekhe usse samajh aaja kya ho raha hai, and I have already written that system order print ln. Let's execute the code by hitting this button. Run jello.java. And on the right hand side, you can see the output hello world. So, with that being said, let's now declare our variable. Or also, which uh, integer value we print karke dekh lete. Control C, Control V. And let's say I want to print a simple value 101. Nothing fancy here. I'll just execute it. And you can see that it's 101 and it's working fine. But Hamesha values directly to ni use kar sakte. Sometimes you need to store it somewhere and then use it. And that is where uh, variables come into play. Variables can be, you know, up variables. Ke mein aise soch sakte ho. It is a um, placeholder, it is a empty room where you can put any value and access it later. This can be useful for storing calculations, for storing other values. And uh, I mean, exceptionally, uh, like probably without variables coding is not possible because we can use direct value. Sakte. We need to store them and use them later. Uh, it's totally required all of the times. If you don't know the number, kya hai, so you just have to declare a variable and then you have to input lena padega, right? So uh, let's see. Um, let's, how, let's see how to declare a variable. I've already written the syntax here. Let's understand the syntax and then, then let's discuss how to declare a variable. So basically, variable is a, uh, you know, this is the technical definition. It assigns an address and you can variable name ke through access kar sakte ho. You just understand it like it's an empty space where you can store any value and then access it later. So the syntax to create a variable is you have to write the data type space. Any random name given to your variable is equal to value. Also, keep in mind that variable names are sort of meaningful, you know, uh, the code is readable. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's declare a variable. And what I'm going to do is I'll say declaring a variable. Okay, so uh, the way we do that is we just saw the syntax, data type, space, name to the variable, space, um, value uh, is equal to value. So let's say I want to store this value 101. So 101 is basically an integer value. So the way I declare an integer variable is I just say int any name to the variable my int is equal to uh, let's say 101. So this is a simple thing, uh, nothing very fancy here, just the data type followed by any random name that you give to your code that you give to your variable and then the value that uh, it, the variable has to store. Also do keep in mind that there are some rules that you have to follow by by naming your by you know naming your variable. And normally, uh, this question comes in your end sense that uh, there will be given five different variables, and they will ask you which of the variable is invalid, which variable name cannot be used. So do keep in mind some simple, very simple rules on your fingertip that the variable may start with an underscore. That is fine. It can start with an underscore, or uh, it, it should start with this particular character. So do keep in mind the first character, the first letter of your variable can either be an underscore or it has to be an alphabet. Capital or small doesn't matter, but it has to be an alphabet. You cannot start your variable with a number. That is wrong. It will instantly give an error 
syntax error. So that is wrong. You can either start it with an underscore or with an alphabet. Okay. And other than that, uh, in between your variables, you can use underscore. That is fine. You cannot use any other special character. You cannot use hashtag, uh, dollar, percentage. None of these are usable. Do keep in mind because this is important. Also, you cannot give an empty space in between your variable name. That is also not allowed. So five simple rules has to start can start with an underscore has to start with an alphabet and numbers are not allowed. It can uh, that name should not include any kind of special character other than underscore. And it's uh, yeah, it may end or may not end with a number. That's fine. It's OK, but it should not start with a number. So these are some uh, rules that you need to keep on your fingertip by naming a variable. And Iskarava, let's say uh, not an integer, upko bhi float value store karna hai. Uh, what is a float value? Float means floating point decimal. That means any decimal number uh, that has some points to it, any floating point integer. So to do that, you have to say float. And then you need to give it a variable, my float. Uh, vari I mean variable name. My float is equal to 101.10. .10. So that is how you declare a float value. And other than that, now you can see that there's an error here type mismatch it says type mismatch because by default any point which has a decimal notation which has a you know floating point value that is it has a decimal decimal point that number is by default double now double is another data type in java which means that it can store uh, you can kind of think like both float and double store uh, decimal value points but double can store more precise values like after the after this point it can store 15 different digits after the point, but float can only store a six or seven. Okay. Now let's see uh, if uh, if I declare my variable as double, it will just work, work just fine. My double is equal to 101.10. .10. Now this will work just fine because by default, every point, uh, you know, uh, de decimal number in Java is by default a double. So this works fine. But this here is an error that um, this particular number cannot be assigned to a float because a double type of value. Hai. So how to do that? Uh, how to fix this error? Just type f. F tells uh, Java that this is uh, you know convert into float, and now it can be stored in a float value. So what do we uh, understand from this? And whatever value you are assigning to any variable should be compatible with its data type, or else it cannot store. For example, I have a string value. I cannot say ABC. It is an error because for that I have to declare it string. And okay, we have learned another new syntax. We just learned how to declare a string value. So yeah. Now what's the perk of doing that? Let's say now you want to print it out. Instead of writing the entire string within double quotes, now I can just uh, you know give them the variable which holds those values. I can just say print my int and let me copy it so c control v and again and again so here i'm going to say my float and here i'm going to say my double now if i execute this code you can see that the outputs are just as we expected 101 from my int ab from my float and my double 101.1 okay so having said that up is my see problem Yahape, we hard coded these values. This technique is called hard coding. So, what, what does hard coding mean? Hard coding means we manually assign the value to a variable. But not in you know in real life pro pro programs, we cannot do that. We don't know what is the input that we need. So to do that, we have to use inputs. We need to know what the user wants to input. So, how do we do that? Uh, how do we uh, you know assign some value to a variable that we do not know uh, right uh, it's a problem right we do not know what to what what to assign to that value because the user is uh, because the user has to give that input so how to do that now there comes another uh, technique in java called scanner class so let's see how using scanner class we can take inputs from the user during runtime so what is runtime when i hit the value when i hit the value uh, when i hit this play button uh, this code just works fine because it already knows what these variables are. It already has its value and hence it directly prints them. But uh, 
and and when i uh, you know play this button when i uh, use the play button this is the code gets executed and that is called the runtime of the code because now the code is running and yeah something about that yeah okay cool uh now there comes scanner class so what when is scanner class useful when you don't know what is going to be the value in your variable then you have to use the scanner class to take input during runtime so while running the code itself we will take the input from the user and then execute it so the way you do that is let's understand how to use the scanner class now to understand the scanner class uh, to use the scanner class the syntax is pretty simple you have to use scanner okay before i use scanner i have to import something because scanner is not by default present in your java code it is defined in some other program and you can actually use it so to use it i have to say import because hum abhi us particular scanner ka code import kar lenge and then usko use karenge because hame nahi pata user se input kaise lena hai but we know that by using scanner we can do that so hum scanner ka code import kar lenge to do that i'll just say java dot util uh, so scanner is basically a utility function and hence it is present inside java dot util and guys this is how you import a library in java basically the syntax is import path to library so basically a uh, using this dot separator you write the entire path where your library is located since uh the library is located inside since the library of scanner is located inside java dot util so i will say java dot util dot scanner theek okay? hai so this is how you import the scanner class and can, now you can directly use this scanner keyword in your code also something of notice inside instead of actually importing just one class you can use uh, asterisk operator and it will import everything in your file and in scanner okay there's a question one question how to limit the double up to four decimal points like we do it in c++ okay to do that it can be done during the printing time by using uh, you know uh, format specifiers so going back to scanner class and yeah we did some hard coding here this is the section for hard coding now let's use scanner so we have already imported scanner and now let's understand the syntax to use scanner and then input some values so the way you do that is you just say scanner keyword after that some name to your input reader ab basically tum iske baad is variable ko jo bhi name doge us variable ke through tum kuch bhi input le sakte ho theek hai now i am going to take my uh, name my scanner as input and i'll say scanner input is equal to new scanner and now within double quotes just pass this value system dot in so let me quickly explain you what's happening here basically we declare a variable of type scanner theek hai understand it this way we have declared a variable input of type scanner and we are assigning it this value so what this new operator does new operator basically uh, you know creates a new instance a new existence of something after new whatever you write its new existence will be created and that will be assigned to whatever variable is present on the left hand side now within scanner we are passing this system dot in so what is the system dot in system dot in we are basically telling the scanner variable we are basically telling scanner that we are uh, read the inputs from system dot in there are lots of other variables that can be passed here but this is what we are going to use 99% of the time when we write system dot in you know when we write system dot out everything goes to the console everything is printed in the console similarly when you write system dot in we are basically telling the java that we take the inputs from the console and that is why we will write our inputs so when i declare kar diya scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in now let's take some value as an input but before uh, taking some value the user must know theek hai isko pehle first hand visualize karte hain then all let's solve it so abhi tak values seedha seedha print hote the but now i want to assign some my value whatever value i assign should be uh, you know assigned to my variable so uh, the way i do that is i declare a string variable first of all let's start with integer i'll declare an integer variable and i will name it my custom int is equal to uh, input dot now i'll say dot because this input variable is now belongs to class scanner 
this is actually a class. This is not a simple data type. It is a class. And class can have lots of, uh, you know, internal methods. So what is a method? Class can then have defined codes so that you through up those class ka benefits. Le sakte ho. Now to take those benefits, you have to use this dot operator. And the moment I use this dot operator, you can see some, uh, you know, uh, what do I say? This some prompts already come up. Now these prompts are basically telling me some methods that are already defined inside class scanner, and I can directly use it in my code. So I'm going to use next int because my input variable is of type int. So my integer input longa. So to take an integer input, you just have to say my int and i is capital. And yeah, just like that, you take an input from the user. <clears throat> now let's run this code and let's see what's the output. Okay, there is some exception. Okay, so the exception is exception thread main input mismatch exception. Okay. Let's see what that is all about. Inline number, sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah. So inline number Java 24. So in, in this line, it's saying that there is an error. And let's see what that is. So if I, uh, in Eclipse, it's a, uh, you know, um, internal function that if you hover your mouse over something that has an error, then it will directly uh, tell you what the error is at that particular place. Okay. Uh, I guess I have written just fine and yeah, I think the uh, okay, my bad. I've written it within double quotes. Sorry about that. I, I, you are actually passing this value, and I don't know why I've written this within double quotes. Sorry about that. Uh, my bad. So uh, after doing that, let's see uh, if the code works fine. And yeah, now you can see the code is running, but आगे कुछ आ नहीं रहा, ठीक है? आगे कुछ आ नहीं रहा, because ये हमारे input का wait कर रहा है. And we have no idea that it is waiting for an input because हमने यहाँ पे कोई prompt नहीं डाली. So that is one of the things that we have to do. Currently, I have to put value dal ke, you know, uh, an integer variable enter likhto, to kuch ho nahi ra. So let's see how do can how we can make it more interactive, how we can ask the user for an input and then assign it to a variable. So it is a good practice to actually give some input message in system now dot print ln uh, type some integer. And what I'm going to do here is I'll say yeah. And after that, whatever input I have got, I will just print that out. I'll say system.out.println again. And inside that, I'm going to do print ln. Inside that, I'm going to do you have typed. Now, inside system.out.println, till now, we have only been using double quotes. But other than double quotes, you can also use this plus operator and then print some extra value. So let's say I want to print the value of my custom int. In that case, I can just use my custom int here. You can actually write any variable name after separated by this plus operators. They will be appended together when they are printed out. Cool. So um, scanner input my system system order print ln and let's run this code. Okay. So now let's see here the code has paused. The code is still running. As you can see that the red uh, red icon is still present here. It means the code is running. And if I press this, then the code will be stopped. So it means that the code is running. See, during the runtime, it is waiting for the user to give an input. Because till now, I have not write, written something. It is waiting for an integer. Uh, this is exactly what happens when next int is written. It waits for an input so that the user can input something. Let's say I write 100 and I say enter. And then the Java will take 100 as an input and it will print out the next line. So just remember that if you have used this next int scanner function uh, anywhere, then it won't go to the next line until you have, it has got an input. And guys, that is how you get a user defined input using scanner class. So that is something else too. Not only integer, you can take any kind of input. Let me copy this code here. And I'll say control V, control V. Let's say I want a float input. So I'll declare it float. And here I will say next float. Let's say uh, I want a string. 
Okay, so I have already used this variable name. I have to name it for. And let's say uh, you you want to accept a string from the you uh, you know user as an input. So how do you do that? You will say string my custom string, and here you can just say next, or you can also use next line. Both of these works fine. Either you can just say next, or you can say next line. So next or next line, my guys, it's a simple difference. Eh? Uh, key when you write next. Okay, let me copy this code for you, and so that it will be a better understanding. So they, these are two different things which do the same thing. Okay, both of these things, uh, uh, input dot next and input dot next line. Both of these uh, characters return. Both of these, you know, scanner functions return the. Uh, what do we say? Return the same string kind of value, and hence we are storing them in a string operator, uh, string variable. Then what is the difference between next and next line? Why do both of these things exist? If both of them are returning string, it means string ka input to hum dono se le sakte hain. Then why these two methods exist? The reason is when we write next, it only uh, it returns till the four byte space, or you can say just space. And when I return something using next line, it will return complete line. Returns complete. Okay, my bad wrong spelling. Complete line. So what is the what does this mean? So again, my input dot next click down, and then um, the user gives input as um, the sky is blue. Then only sky will be taken as input. After space, whatever is written won't be taken as input. So next basically means only take one word as an input, and next line basically means everything that exists. Before our uh, enter is hit, that is a line. Take everything as an input. So let's quickly demonstrate that and put a prompt space there so that we know that the computer is waiting for an input. And yeah, another one goes here. So what I'll do here is I'll copy this code as well and I'll write it here. I'll write it here and I'll write one. System route print in type some integer, type some integer. Okay. So I'll write another one here. Okay. So what's happening now? Uh, I'll just change the variables, type some integer, and this one is float, enter a float value. So I'll just print a float variable once there. And so as I hope you are coding with me, or if you're facing any doubt, do tell me. Uh, and this is uh, nothing, but I'm just trying to demonstrate the different kinds of inputs that can be taken using scanner. And after that, I'm just printing those out. So, and also before printing, I'm using, you know, a prompt, a prompt that can be displayed on the screen. And here I'm going to use S. So now if I execute this code, uh, you'll see that it will first ask me for an integer. Now, let's say I'll give 10 as an input. It will say you type 10. Now, I'll ask for a float and I will input 10.1, 1, let's say. Now, in a, it will say, okay, you type 10.1. Now, now see, now comes the interesting stuff. It's asking for a string. And internally uh, in the code, we can see that now we are going to use next. So, what if I write a complete string? Let's say, man, like here, uh, sky is, you know, something you can see that the output do I that I get after returning this sky is nila nila <laughs> the output is sky uh, it means it, it only read one single word not the entire line and after that there was a small problem uh, this next line was the next input and it thought that is input uh, is nila nila is my input because uh you Input that next ta, it's not just one word read kara and baaki sab ko chhod diya. Ki baaki sab abhi bhi yeh pe pada hua. So next line aaya and usko laga ki this is my input and it read that and hence the output is nila nila. Chhiye. So I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, I hope that makes sense and we all are on the same page with this code. So now let's move on to something interesting and that interesting stuff would be operators. So. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to here and let's move on to operators now. <laughs> so I'll comment out this entire code. 
uh, okay instead of commenting i can just create another one new uh, class and i'll name it operators so i guess i i, I think you might have already guessed what are operators operator basically means you know addition subtraction multiplication division those kind of operations the code that will allow you to do these operations are called operators so how do you do that the way you do that first of all a public uh, main function declare karenge because uh, other than that we know that it won't work it won't work if it doesn't have a main function so public static void uh, main and inside this i'm going to use string args okay and inside this uh, i'm going to do uh, something called operators so to do some operation now i'm not taking a custom input mai pehle se kuch value hard code kar deta hu theek hai let's hard code some value and internally what i'm going to do is i'll declare int a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 so i just declare two variables and assign two different values to them and yeah this is how you can use comma operator if you you know after writing a data type you can assign values like this all the variables that you use with a comma will take the same data type as mentioned in the first so yeah it's sometimes helpful to do that okay and yeah sorry about that um int a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 and now let's use some uh, operators so first of all let's take a look at arithmetic operators So let's say you want to perform some arithmetical operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and yeah, I guess something else is left. Modulus. So all of these can be done in Java, um, a same way that done in any other language. Very simple syntax. Let's say I want to print the sum of two numbers. I'll just say system dot out dot print ln. Okay, sorry about that. System dot out dot print ln, and I'll say a plus b and now if i run the code you can see that the sum of a plus b that is 30 is printed but now i want to first store that in a variable and then print it out so how to do that i'll say int c is equal to a plus b and now here i just have to print c okay hmm and yeah in uh, in print ln uh, in you know print a uh, within print ln as i said that using plus operators we can differentiate the uh, you know values and print multiple values together you can also do something like a plus i'll say plus and here i'll use this then i'll get b because i want to print the value of b and then again a plus then i'll write a different string like is equal to and then i'll say a uh, plus c so if i run the code now you can see that it will give some more meaningful output like 10 plus 20 is equal to 30 and yeah basically that is what i've done here literally everything should be separated by a plus operator and it will work fine inside print ln and yeah so that is about a plus operation now let's say i want to do subtraction i'll say minus here and i'll write minus here and yeah let's run the code you can see that our 10 minus 20 is minus 10 so that's that and now if i want to multiply two numbers I'll just use this asterisk. Uh, asterisk means multiplication in Java. And if I run the code, you can see that the output is multiplication. And if I now write divide, see, if I now write divide, it's going to be a problem because ten divided by twenty is a fractional number, and we are storing that in an in an integer. So, is that going to be a problem? Let's see. So Java actually gave gave us an output of zero. And why is that happening? Because since uh, we are storing a floating point value, something that should be a floating point value in a decimal thing, it is going to be a problem. Because Java cannot. Uh, Java says that everything should be strictly data type, uh, you know, based. So it cannot store a floating point in an integer kind of variable. So, and in order to accommodate that, in order to accommodate this value in integer, it actually converts the number into integer automatically. and this is called um let me write the technical term for that it's called yeah implicit implicit type casting uh this phenomenon that's happening here is called implicit type casting we know that uh integer variable cannot store a floating point value but still it is storing it because internally java is implicitly converting that 
floating point value into integer value and then storing it. And as we already know, 10 divided by 20 is 0 0.5. So since Java is converting it implicitly into you know, integer value and hence, zero is being printed because 0 0.5 may say it's a floating point value 0.5 to hatali and sub zero print kept them. and it is true for any other thing let's say i write 101 i guess that it will be more uh you know meaningful and also let me write the division operator here yeah now let's see 10 divided by 101 divided by 20 should technically be uh one uh you know 5.2 should be 5.2 uh but we are getting just five because the floating point part or the decimal part is being uh, truncated or removed and only the integer part is visible and this uh, this thing is called implicit type casting and now there is also something called explicit type casting and i guess i can show that to you guys here so now instead of printing the value instead of storing the value of c if i want to print it out right here if a divided by b now it will work fine because it is not restricted by any data type and but still you can see that a by b is still returning as a integer value so how do i get a floating point value so one easy fix to this can be i will store the value in a float value or let's say double because double is the default in java and i will say a by b and here uh, i'll assign the value to c and now let me just print it out c so now if uh, okay sorry about that now if i just run the code you can see that the output is 5.0 and it's working fine it is still not fine because 101 divided by 20 should be 5.1 but okay let's see what's wrong with that okay that is weird <clears throat> okay so the problem is that even though uh, okay, now here comes the next problem. Even though a double is, uh, you know, now even though on the left hand side, uh, this variable is capable of storing a floating point value, but still the output that we are getting is still 5.0. It means kuch to ora internally ki wo, uh, ek, uh, wo floating point ko capture nahi kar pa hai. So how do we do that? Because uh, on the right hand side, this entire statement is of type integer. A B integer type hai, B B integer type hai, and hence we are getting an uh, overall integer statement. Now to convert it into a uh, you know floating point value or uh, what do you say decimal kind of output, all you have to do is multiply it with 1.0. Now what this will do is now overall this statement is not only integer type; it has some floating point type, and hence uh, the output can now be stored as a floating point value. And okay, it is still 5.0 that is weird let me do something here i'll multiply it with 1.0 first and then divide it 1.0 first and then divide it by a by b now let's see the output yeah now you can see that the output is 5.1 so how did i do that i used a 1.0 multiplication explicitly to tell the java compiler that this is not an integer statement it has some floating point value and hence treat it as a floating point value and now it can generate the decimal point as well okay and there is another technique to it also called explicit type casting and the way explicit type casting works is you will uh, you know explicitly tell the compiler that this statement should be treated as a float kind of thing now how do i do that you just write float here or since my output is of type double, I'll just write double. And this technique is called explicit type casting. If I run save and run the code now, you can see that we're going to get the same output. Okay, so that is all about operators. Okay, one another operator is left. Let me comment out this code and uncomment this part. So now let's suppose that you want to, you know, now you don't want to divide, rather you want the remainder that comes after division. So to do that, there is this percentage operator. It means mod. It basically stands for modulus. Uh, but yeah, in short, it's called mod operator. And what it does, it returns to you the remainder after division. So let's see that in the output. Um, okay, 102 mod 20 gives us two because this uh, automatically uh, because as we know that 20 uh, 102 divided by 20 is going to return us two. And other than that, uh, this brings us to an end to arithmetic operators. 
then there is something called uh, logical and relational operators. So let's fix that as well. Uh, let's understand what is a logical operator and what are relational operators. So from here, we're going to begin. Uh, let's study relational first, and then let's go to logical relational operators. Uh, so what is a relational operator? Relational operator means basically to compare or to find the relation between two variables, right? Let's say you want to find the relation between two different operators. How will you do that? Uskiliata relational operator. Now, what is a relation? Relations mean relation means basically uh, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. If you want to know this kind of relation between two operators, how they compare to each other, then there is relational operator. Now, the different types of relational operator in Java are uh, let's do that in the code itself. Okay. System dot out dot print ln and I'll say all right. Now I'm I, what do I want to print? I want to print a uh, let's say greater than b. So uh, we know that this is uh, true because a value of a is 102, value of b is 20. So this statement is obviously true. And if I run this code, uh, you can see the output that it prints true. So relational operator can only give two kinds of values. They are binary. They only give either true or false. So that is how relational operators work. They only return a Boolean output. Boolean means only two, true or false, or zero or one. And to store Boolean outputs, there is another data type in Java called Boolean. So you can just declare a variable of type Boolean and you can say it's the answer. Now, what I'm going to do is in answer, I'm going to store A greater than B and I'm going to print answer right here. So if I run this code now, you can see that the output is true. If I write A less than B, the output will definitely be false and yeah it's false other than that there are some things like greater than equal to or and there are things like you know this is greater than equal to this is less than equal to and then there is equal to equal to so greater than equal to and less than equal to you can already guess what is doing now let's jump to equal to equal to equal to equal to basically compares the equality of two operators it will basically compare if the uh, op, uh, you know, operand on the left hand side and the operand on the right hand side are equal. So that is what it is. And if I print the answer now, it will definitely be false because A and B are not equal. And I can see it out. Uh, what is date byte data type? So uh, byte is something that can store integer type values. And <clears throat> let's declare of something type byte. Let's say my byte is equal to zero. So as the name suggests, uh, as the name suggests, byte basically means the size of the data type is going to be one byte exactly. And one byte basically means eight bits. So yeah, one byte basically means eight bits. So it means that any data type called byte any variable called byte can only store eight bits of data and that brings us to the conclusion that the highest number that it can store is to uh, raised to the power seven so that is how uh, that is how bits are converted into size uh, just raise it to the power of total number of bits present minus one so yeah byte is a data which can, which can only store a number between minus 127 to 127 it cannot store less than or smaller than that uh, now there are, there is integer, there is boolean. Um, a boolean is also our size. Uh, the size of boolean is also one byte to be specific. Then there is integer. The size of integer is fixed. It is four bytes. Four byte means uh, four times eight. That is thirty two bits. And the highest number that an integer can store is two uh, raised to the power thirty one, because the number of bits are thirty two. So to the total highest number that it can store is two raised to thirty one. So it's an easy way to remember it just raise uh, the number of bits to the power of two and then subtract one from it that is how you calculate the highest size high largest number that a particular data type can store okay now equal to equal to operator as we saw compares the equality now let's say 
a single operation cannot uh, find the answer that we are looking for. What we want to do is, let's say we have three variables. As we can see that uh, value of A is 102, B of, value of B is 20, and value of C is 2, as assigned from the in, uh, output here. So now let's say I want to uh, check if C is less than A and greater than B. I want a com you know a kind of complex relation. I want to check if a variable is greater than a different variable and less than another different variable. So for that comes log you know uh, for that comes logical operators. So what logical operators do is they allow you to implement some logic in your code, not just a simple comparison, but some logic with it. So let's see how to do that. Let's declare another Boolean operator or let's use the same answer again. Now I'm going to say answer is equal to, I'll use a common brackets. It's not necessary. It just makes your code look cleaner. I'm going to say A greater than B. Sorry, what I wanted to check, I want to check if C is less than A and C is greater than B. So this is the condition that I wanted to check. But now why this double ampersand in between? Double ampersand basically means and. So what is and? And means uh, whatever value up the left side mein likha and whatever value up the right side mein likha, both of them should be exactly same. And uh, I both not exactly same, sorry about that. Basically means that both of them should be true. This condition should give true. This condition should give true. We already know that relational operators only give either true or false. So if both the left and the right operands are true, only then this and operator will say that, okay, uh, assign true to answer. If both of them are not true, then it will assign false to answer. So now let's quickly check that out. Uh, to do that, I'm just going to print that value here. And you can see that the output is going to be false because yeah, of course C is not greater than B. But yeah, if, would I, if I would have written something like less than, then it's definitely true. Okay, now comes another operator. Uh, now there is another operator which does exactly opposite. Not exactly opposite, but kind of. It's called OR operator. So what OR operator does is when OR operator, the symbol for OR operator is two straight lines. And what it does is if any either one of this is true, if either one of the two conditions passed to it is true, then it's going to give you a correct output. It's going to say true. So let's test that out as well. And all I'm going to do is save the code and one for here, one for this. So now if I run the code, you can see that the first uh, operation gives false because C is greater than B. And the same thing gives true when used with OR operation. The reason is that C less than A is correct. Of, of course, 2 is less than 102. And C greater than B is false because yeah, uh, 20 is greater than C the vice versa is not possible. So when we use OR operators, um, it assigns true to answer because first condition is true. It, next is false, doesn't matter, or just needs one true and it will uh, execute a correct answer. Now, other than that, there is another operator called NOT operator. So NOT operator, what it does, it just inverts the value. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Um, yeah. So we know that this operation gives us true. But what if we find to what if we want to find the opposite of whatever uh, you know value the expression is giving? So let, for that, I'll just en, you know encapsulate the entire code within common brackets, and in here I'm going to use this exclamation mark. So what this exclamation mark does is it basically uh, means not operator, and it tells whatever value the internal uh, brackets are giving. The, what in, internal expression gives just invert that if it is true make it false if it is false then make it true and if i now execute this code you can see that the output is going to be false because this operation inside it it gives us true and then it is converted into false and yeah that brings us uh, to an end of logical relational and mathematical operators as we have seen and other than that, there is another set of operators called bitwise operators, which I don't think is required for insims. Hence, I've not covered it, but I'll give you just a quick brief of what is what are bit bitwise operators. So 
uh, it you know allows you to many uh, you know play with the uh, numbers at a bit level bit means basically the way that they are stored in your computer so uh, let's define your bit wise this will be very quick because this is not important for the perspective of nsims what i'm going to do is i'll declare two variables in uh, for bit wise the, uh, it's a good practice if you take unsigned inputs unsigned int uh, a is equal to 10 now okay there is some output here and okay my bad sorry about that uh, i'll explain the uh, you know reason for that error pretty soon the reason is that uh, um, unsigned and signed is not different in java it is not supported so let's go with d let's go with a uh, simple integer and what i'm going to do now is basically d can there value at 10 and internally what it looks like is uh, the binary representation of 10 if you convert uh, 10 into sir only give bit while not expansion this okay i guess <clears throat> what i'm trying to do here is just so what demonstration of bitwise operator i just uh, declared a variable d and assigned it a value of 10 now uh, internally a 10 is looking to uh, 10 is you know 10 for us because we can read decimal numbers this is called decimal notation decimal notation means a number which has 10 digits a uh, number system which has 10 digits like uh, for you know the system that we use it has 10 digits 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 9 and then 0 but a uh, computer only understands binary and binary notation only supports two digits that is zero and one so computer won't understand what is 10 this is how computer is going to look at 10 one zero one zero one zero one zero stands for uh, 10 in binary notation you can convert it into decimal uh, basically zero multiplied by two raised to the power zero one multiplied by two raised to the power one this multiplied by two raised to the power two and this multiplied by two raised to the power three that is how numbers you know are converted into binary to decimal so 10 in binary notation basically means 10 uh, 1010 and similarly it's not be just because 10 looks like similar to this but if let's say it was it would have been 12 so the way you would do that is 1101 one, zero, one, and 1100 one, zero. yeah so this is how 12 would look like in binary notation every number has its different representation in binary notation and then there comes bitwise operators which allow you to play with that bitwise operation and i'll just give you some examples of bitwise operation uh, the explanation is you know pretty uh, not not so important for this perspective let's say i print something I, I, and let's say i want to print uh, uh, implement a bitwise operation so the way i do that is i'm just going to say uh, d left shift 2 and if i run this code now you'll see that it will be something very weird to where we entered 12 but it has become uh, 48 now let me explain that with a simpler example if i take one in binary one also looks like one now when i use left shift it basically telling the compiler that whatever value is existing within you just shift that at a bit level two places to the left now when you shift two places to the left uh, skip uh, right side of a blank space aa jayega jahan pe wo originally tha so add zeros there now this is what it will look like after applying this right shift operator and hence um, you can see like uh, if it becomes 100 100 basically means 4 in decimal notation so if i uh, you know execute this code now you will get an output 4 so that is what bitwise uh, operators do they manipulate the number at a bit level similarly there is right shift operator and right shift operator se number 0 ho jayega because one already right most bit hai agar isko hum right shift operator 0 karenge then ye jo bhi hai usko erase kar dega and yeah that is just a basic thing about bitwise operators there are other operators as uh, bitwise mein aur bhi aate hain bitwise and bitwise not but let's keep that for later okay so that brings us to the end of all the different kinds of operators in java and yeah so conditional now let's uh, see how we can write conditional operators conditional op, uh, you know control flow uh, i guess that's something important up here okay cool so now let's move on to the next 
uh, section. I'll create another file here. I'll name it new class conditionals. So what are conditionals? Uh, till now, we have seen that uh, these kinds of operations are you know, equal to equal to kind of operations or this and and logical operators. So basically logical operators and relational operators written true and false. But we are not doing something meaningful out of it. We're just printing it out. So now let's do something meaningful with that true or false value. So to do that, let's first declare some random variables. Int A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20, C is equal to 30. Uh, now what I'll do here is I'll use conditionals. Now the way you use conditionals are is totally up to you. There are two different, uh, three different types of conditional formats. Conditionals. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I want to print hello, but I want to print hello only when, only if and only if A is less than B. But let's assume that we are taking the values through scanner and we don't know what the user will input but we only want to print hello if a is less than 20. So the way I do that is I have to use a keyword called if. Now after if you just have to use this common brackets and inside this write the condition that you want to evaluate. So let's say I'll, I'll say if a less than b, then use this curly brackets. Uh, this basically means true block. Okay. So what this what does this true block means? True block basically means key. If this condition is true, then execute whatever is written with, within this curly brackets. So I want to execute hello world if this condition is true. So I'll say hello world. Okay. And now if I just run this code, you can see that hello world is printed because A is less than B. Now let's just make you know write the vice versa of this condition and see nothing is printed out because which hoi nahi raha. so in that case when let's say your if condition fails if the condition is false and you want to do some alternative thing so for that else exists now whatever you write within else is uh, is called the false block and yeah it's called the false block so whatever you write after else uh, will be executed if and only if this condition is false. So, yeah, uh, system dot out dot print ln and I'll say if fail. So yeah, this block will only be executed if this condition is false. And we know that this is false because of course 10 cannot be greater than 20. That will be uh, a joke in maths. So yeah, if failed. So that is how you, you know, uh, control the flow of your program because all of these is your program. This line is also part of your program. This line is also part of your program, but you are selectively executing the different lines by using if conditionals and hence conditionals are also called control flow because it controls the flow of your program. And other than that, let's say uh, there was something else you wanted to do other than else. I mean, if this condition is false, you want to check some other condition. And if even that condition fails, then you want to go to the alternative way. So how do you write more conditions? To do that, we we, we have something called else and uske baad fir se if dalbo. Now within this if, write a condition uh, b less than c. And then after all that, write another else condition and uh, you can in here in the else I can write somewhere out dot print ln everything failed. Okay, guys. Oh, give me a sec. Okay. Um, uh, I guess that is working fine. And let's just print that out. Okay. So now, uh, if A greater than B is of course going to fail because 10 is not greater than 20. So it will come and execute this next if block. And if B is less than C, B is less than C is of course true. So it will enter here. And let's say I'll keep it second condition first.
And if I now execute this piece of code, you can see that the output is second condition passed because beach man, your condition true. Ho gaya. But in case your condition be false, hota, and I would have run the code and then it would have printed everything failed. So that is how you, you know, selectively run different sections of the program with multiple conditions. And with that being said, uh, we have done, we are through halfway through the course. After this, we'll start with loops, arrays, and object oriented programming. So let's take a 10 minutes break. And if you have any doubts, feel free to ping in the chat. If anyone have any doubt, they can ask in the comment section, guys. Otherwise, we have 10 minutes break. Let's take a quick 10 minute break. Till then, you can revise all the concepts what you have studied till now. Have some water and you can eat something. Then we continue with the you know, other part of this. So how you like the session guys? Is it is it feasible guys? Is it good? Let's let's have a ten minute break. Uh so Vamsi's uh Vamsi's has a Vamsi has a doubt that uh like how one will be written as minus two. So uh uh, once you basically uh, the not that you that tilt operator basically is working like a not operator here it is inverting the bits at a bit level so if you invert all the bits at a bit level and uh let me uh to uh, make you understand that let's uh, first understand how signal you know sign of a number positive or negative is understood by java so basically <clears throat> let's say uh, we have a number of type int and int basically means four bytes so four bytes means 32 bits. But as we saw that we can only use that uh, two raised to the power 31. Why do we say that the highest number that an integer can store is two raised to the 31? That is because only out of the 32 bits, first, the leftmost bit, also called the most significant bit, it is reserved. It is reserved for a purpose. I'll tell you the purpose in a while. The, uh, just understand that only the rightmost 31 bits are usable. The first one is not usable. The reason for that is the first bit is always stored for signature. And that is how the Java knows that whether this number is a positive number or a negative number. And OK, so let's say uh, integer uh, is, has 32 bits. So the leftmost bit is either 0 or 1. It can either, uh, like all bits can be either 0 or 1. But in this condition, when the first bit is 1, it will understand that this is a positive number and if this bit is zero, it will understand that this is a negative number. So when you apply this uh, operation that you uh, wrote, where did it go? Yeah, so uh, basically when you apply this tilt operation to any number, it basically means that invert all the bits at a bit level. And when you invert all the bits, the first bit, which was actually storing the signature, it also got inverted. And that is why the number becomes negative. So if you apply this tilt operation in a pos uh, you know, negative number, it will invert the negative, uh, you know, the first bit from zero to one, and it will make it positive. And the reason that uh, one becomes minus two is that all the negative numbers in Java are stored in this format. It's uh, something related to Boolean algebra. It's called two's uh, complement. Another uh, reason that Java uses two's complement is that uh, ichi socho, ichi socho, he, you know. <coughs> Uh, the first bit in uh, all the by numbers are is reserved. After that, we have 30, you know, after that, we have some 31 usable bits as a karke, 31 different bits. Hote hai. And after that, uh, some are uh, all are usable. So this is how Java stores a number. The 31 bits are uh, reserved for the number in, in an integer data type. And the leftmost bit is uh, signature reserved. Hota hai. But we cannot use that, right? We cannot use that. So let's say that all the bits, all the bits are zero. All the bits are zero. So it means now it's fine. And now let's say under so one. Hai. So it means uh, this first bit basically telling the signature that this is positive. And after that, all the bits are zero. It means decimal notation pe iska value is zero. Hai? But now, if I first bit ko bhi zero, kar dun, then what 
is it going to make is it going to make sense because we just changed the uh, you know signature of the number how does it make sense there cannot be a negative zero right zero ke do representations ho ja rahe hain abhi let me just go to a bit more on the right hand side yeah abhi basically zero ke do notations ho rahe hain and that is not possible right ye confusion create karta hai compiler would get confused how the same number can have two different representations so usi liye uh, you know negative numbers are stored in two's complement format guys uh, if anyone have any query they can ping in the chat we are here to you know solve all the queries and second thing is that ki uh, guys how you are liking this is it is it good or tell your comments what what do you think about this what do you think about this sprint java what we are doing is it good bad or you know it is it interesting or something else so do comment and tell us it will help us you know to plan these types of initiative in the future as well do you guys want something like this of dsa data structure and algorithm do you guys guys want these types of initiative of dsa a crash course of dsa or you know some of the problems we will solve for you of dsa like okay great if you are understanding each and every concept you know you will you will create the wonders in your exam and some exam great great thank you thank you everyone
Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, there will be more concept on core Java. Okay. A Java framework, uh, I think we will going to cover today. I think. I'm not sure about that. But uh, uh, what we will cover today, you know, all these concept or all these, you know, points are belong from your, you know, course syllabus, course content of your colleges and all. So for uh, if you if you are here for studying only for the college then then definitely we will cover each and every concept look we we have a very you know vast series where we talk about uh, we will take almost 15 to 20 days while covering java we will start java from very basics again this is a crash course of java uh, DSC, guys, uh, you can see the audience. You know, there are 20 to 24 students now, those who are watching this series. So, Samaj Ni Ata Ki Hame Karna Chaye, Nahi Karna Chaye. Actually, uh, we put our three hours, you know, not only these three hours, but Isse Pele content banane mein Same Jata. So, we want at least a decent audience with whom we can host a series or a, you know, content. But we definitely host some topics for DSA. DSA doubts We have almost uh, five to ten topics. Just my most of these students with doubts. We will take all the doubts and try to cover all the doubts. Abhi dus minute ka break hai yaar. Pani nahi piyo. Thank you, thank you very much, Apurva. Uh, we too. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, Apurva. At least you have understood what you have, you know, not understood from last two months. It's it's great. It's great. Any other doubt, guys? Uh, we are also coming up with some of the database like MongoDB, Redis. We are also coming up with full stack development to kar sakte hai. If you, have, if you guys feel any doubt in any technology domain, so just ping on the telegram or you know you can call me up also. You, uh, my name is Sarthak. You, uh, I am the co-founder of Dot Question Mark. So my number will be in WhatsApp groups pe bhi and telegram. Pe bhi. So you can call me anytime if you have any doubts regarding these. Okay. Saksham bhi hai. We have Saksham, we have Dibya Shom, Shitej, Siddharth. <laughs> this is my first Java class, and I'm able to create. Hopefully, this will be our, you know, one of the best class for open source contribution. For open source contribution, Shlok, if you know DevOps, if you know C, C++, if you know a single language, you can contribute to open source. If you know anything about you know, any domain you can contribute to open source. Um, yes, uh, more concept, more domains, more technology. Let's create something which is not created by any other person, you know, in the history. Uh, this session is great, Bhaiya, but I don't know why people join in the beginning. But I, I also don't know. I also don't know, but no problem, guys. We are here to teach. You know, we don't focus on the numbers as far as concerned. Okay, numbers only, you know, only boost our motivation. Like uh, if 100 people are joining in the stream, so there is some big motivation running behind me. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, if you have any doubt regarding ADBMS or you know or uh, or DBMS, just ping your doubt on Telegram. If we have more than ten to fifteen doubts, we will make a separate video on that, or we will take a live session to cover all your doubts. So I think uh, break is now over in next one minute. Abhi tak kisi ko bhi koi doubt ho raha hai toh
Okay, I guess we are good to go um, with the session. Uh, yes, yes. Give me a minute. Okay, sure. Now you uh, can continue. Okay, so above it is not necessary to write uh, the string ARGS as a parameter in the main function. It's totally optional. Uh, it is only written so that uh, when you are you know, executing this code from the command line, let's say you're executing it from the terminal and not from Eclipse directly. In that case, this uh, string ARGS that you just gave here will basically be uh, holding those commands which are given as an input. And yeah. Okay, so now let's proceed with the session. Um, the first thing that we need to do is uh, let's understand, uh, let's say that we have a situation that only one number is not going to be enough. Let's say we want to store uh, 50 different, you know, let's say we want to store uh, 50 different integer numbers. So how do we do that? Are we going to declare A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and some at some point it's going to go beyond Z? But we don't want to do that because it's not going to happen. I mean, it is possible, but it is not feasible to do. No, it's here, for example, here it is 50, but there can be situations where 100, we need 1,000, when we need a million numbers to be stored. But none of that can be written. Uh, but I mean, none of that can be you know feasible. None of that is feasible. We cannot do that uh, typically by writing it out. So how do we uh, you know store these huge amounts of numbers when we are um, when, when we need a data, you know, a variable just to store the same type of data. So for that, arrays come into picture. Now, there are two ways that you can uh, declare array. First of all, is called the static or compile time declared array. So uh, let me tell you what is compile time declared array. It is me It means that basically, right during the compilation time, an array uh, is uh, the I mean, the <laughs> Java compiler is going to know what is going to be the size and it will pre-allocate the size to it. Okay. The size will be pre-allocated to it and that is what uh, is called a uh, compiled time array. During the compilation time itself, Java knows uh, what is going to be the size of the array. And it is static because uh, honestly, you uh, Java already knows uh, what is the size. So how do we declare a static or compiled time declared array? The way you do that is uh, first of all you write the integer type. Uh, I mean the data type of what you in or what kind of data you want to store in your array. After that, just this simple square brackets. The square brackets will tell that this is not an integer type. This is an integer array type. Now I will give them a variable. Uh, I will name it int array is equal to. Uh, let's say what can we say? Uh, we can write new it. And then within double brackets, you have to say uh, the size of the array that, or uh, you know, the number of uh, inputs that you want to store in an array. Let's say I want to make it for 50. So I'll say 50 here. And yeah, that it is, uh, that, that's sim how simple it is. Now, instead of declaring 50 different variables of type integer, one single variable will hold 50 different integer values. And as you might have already guessed, if someone asks, what is the size of this array? We know that the size of input is four bytes. Size of integer is four bytes multiplied by 50 inputs in the array. That makes it uh, 200 bytes. So yeah, simple maths, uh, nothing very fancy here regarding size. But the point is with just one variable, we can now store 50 values. Now, how do we access this 50 values? To access this, there is something called subscripts. So it, it's, it's just a fun, fancy name. It's something very simple um, and array. And now within the square brackets, just write the index of the number that you want to uh, capture. Let's say if I say one, if I say zero, zero means the first number in the array. Uh, it is at index zero. Just keep in mind that counting in, in array starts from zero. So this is how you declare an array of a particular size and then this is how you access any value from within it. So let's look that into some, you know, next, let's take that into a next level. So first of all, let's print that out. System dot out dot print ln and I'll say uh, the first value, the first value in the array, then some space 
and then the next value into array of one. So let's see uh, what is going to be the output for this particular piece of code. And it's zero, zero. So by default, it is zero because we have not assigned any value. We have just declared it, right? So let's also assign some values in ARR is uh, of zero. I'll call it 10. And I'll write the same thing here again. Control shift C and P and I'll make it 20. So now let's uh, run this code. And you can see that, yeah, pause my bad button. So uh, this is how you assign values to it. But again, the same problem exists. Are we going to manually write this, you know, lines 50 numbers of time? Because I don't really want to do that. I don't want to write, uh, you know, manually assign 50 values, 50 different values by writing that 50 times, assigning it all different times to each and every index in the array. So for this uh, comes into the picture looping. So what is looping? Looping means if you want to do the same things, uh, same thing again and again, again and again, then you can use looping. So what will looping do? Looping will basically allow you to, you know, <clears throat> iterate from a particular number, a particular number of times until a condition is true. So let's uh, let's uh, look into uh, let's look in the code what that actually means. If I say for now for is a keyword inside this, it takes three different values separated by semicolons and then a body. The body is written within, uh, you know, uh, curly braces. As we have already seen, everything, every code snippet is written within curly braces. So this is the loop body. Okay. So now let's see how to use this for loop and how we can we do repetitive things again and again. Like for example, here this was really repetitive. The only thing that was changing is this index, and everything was completely same. We are doing the same thing again and again. So I want to do this for all the 50 values in my entire array. So how do I do that? For that, first of all, inside for loop, you will give a loop variable. Now, what is a loop variable? Loop variable is something of whose values changes, whose value changes in every iteration. Uh, I'll tell you what is iteration. For example, right now, let's write here for int i is equal to zero. So in the first, uh, within the for loop, the first thing that we did is we declared an integer type variable i and we assigned it zero. Now I want this loop to run until and unless value of i is less than 50. Now why I'm not going beyond 50? Because the size of my array is 50. And as we know, the counting is starting from zero. So the last value will be 49. Last index will be 49. So i starts from zero and goes till less than 50. And after that, I'll use i++. So I++ is, uh, again, another technique. It's called prefix, uh, sorry, postfix operator. Uh, or you can also name it unary operator, also known as increment operator. And what it basically does is when we write I++, it is equivalent to, you know, it is, it is basically a shortcut. Uh, and it basically means uh, this. Here. So it's, it is basically a shortcut. And it means I is equal to I plus 1. So it's a shortcut for that. And similarly, if you write minus minus, it basically means i is equal to i minus one. So uh, normally, apni dekha hai, when we write i, if I would have written i plus two, it means i ka jo bhi value hai, uske saath two add karo aur kisi aur variable mein use karo. But when you use this increment operator, it is a self replacement operator. It or changes the value of the variable which is calling it. So when I write i plus plus, the value of i will be changed itself. So let's go ahead for loop i is equal to zero will continue till less than 50 and then i plus plus so let's see uh first of all before doing anything else let's see the value of i in every iteration print ln i okay now let's run this code and you can see that it prints everything from 49 to from 0 to 49 this 10 and 20 are nothing just uh you know these are so let's not worry about that. Let's look at everything else. 0 to 49, everything is printed and it's working just fine. So uh, now comes the next part. <laughs> now let's understand how is this working. So it basically started from 0. This is the you know uh, initial value that we assigned to i. After that, you are telling it a condition that uh, you know keep executing till your value is less than 50. 
and after that i plus plus so what happens in the first iteration when it enters its value is zero as you can see the first value printed is zero after that it will again go to this condition line it will not it will now skip the initial value it is only executed once after that it will go to this conditional and it will see if current value of i is less than zero that is true zero is less than 50 so it will increase its value by one and it will then execute and it will repeat this process again and again again and again until it reaches 49 now the moment it reaches 49 it will become 50 and uh, it, you know in that iteration it will check okay 50 is less than 50 that is false because 50 is not less than 50 it is equal to if i would have written less than equal to 50 then it would have uh, also printed 50 here but now when the value becomes 50 it won't enter and it will exit from the loop and then it will come out of the loop and agar koi statement hoti to wo bhi print ho jata so now instead of just printing the value uh, let's assign some value to the array that we have just declared i'll say int array is equal to i into 10 it's totally up to you whatever you want to assign i'm just assigning into 10 so that it you know looks uh, meaningful it is doing something meaningful here and now i'm going to print out all the values in your loop all the values in our array so i'll say i less than 50 and i plus plus and now i'll say system dot out dot print ln okay and i'll say yeah just in order print ln int arr of okay not bad int arr of i so uh, when I write it, it uh, you know, system.println of ARR of i, in every iteration, it will be printing off, printing the value at that index inside the array. And in here, in the above loop, we have assigned values. So now, zeros we print only. Now you can see, right, while, while loops are useful, now we manually assign nahi karna pad rahe. Rather, in every iteration, it will be automatically incrementing the value of i and doing the same thing again and again. So whenever you have something that needs to be done again and again, you just use loop. Looping is very useful in that perspective. So if I now run the code, you can see that every uh, value of i is nothing but uh, that index multiplied by 10. So that's about for loop. And there is some other uh, looping techniques called like while and do while. They're not very different. I'll just show you how to do the same thing in while loop. So we have already declared a for loop here. Now let's print the values using while loop. So to do that, I'll just remove this for declaration in the above part and I'll say while and inside while all you have to do is just write the condition. You don't have to write the starting condition and the, uh, you know, incremental condition. Just write the final condition where the loop needs to stop. So I, I'll say while I less than 50 and also it, it, it just makes sense if you read it while I less than 50. It just makes sense until while I, I is less than 50. Keep executing the body. And since abhi amne loop ke under Yahan pe mujhe int pehle declare karna padega because right now int is not a value. int i is not a variable. Okay. Also, as just a small thing, whatever you declare inside for loop only exists within this uh, curly braces. You cannot access that value outside the curly braces. So here I declared an, again int i is equal to zero. And now I will use while i less than 50, keep executing this stuff. Also, now it's a small problem. If I now run this code, it will go into an infinite loop. It will never stop because i key value increment nahi ho hai. You can see here we are just printing it out and here we are just checking the condition. So to increment it, we need to write it manually inside the uh, loop body itself. And now if I run the code, you can see uh, it does the same thing. So that is about while loop. Uske alawa, ek do loop bhi hota hai. Do and what do does is uh, basically i less than 50 <laughs> so yeah it does the same thing but in a reverse way uh jaise baki ke loops entry pe check karte right they check karte hain agar ye condition true hai only then they allow you to enter the loop. now there comes do what do while loop what do while loop does is it will allow you the entry immaterial of the cost for the first time only during the first iteration it will allow you to enter but it won't allow you to pass it won't allow you to exit the loop on, until and unless the condition is satisfied. Until and unless this condition is true, it won't allow you to exit the loop. So that is the basic difference between uh, for, 
while and do while. So both of them are so all of them do the same thing. We just uh, did the same thing with for while and do while. So that is about uh, for while and do while. Now let's come to some core concept of Java. You know, till now we have been doing this operations, basic variables, and that was you know easy to do. But now let's discuss something uh, a very core in Java that is called not not belongs to core Java, but yeah, it's a new package. Let's do something new here. Now we will be doing collections. So what are, what are collections? So Java internally gives you certain data structures that you can directly use. You so that you don't have to implement these data structures yourself, and you can directly use the library and implement the functionality. So let's see what are the different uh, implementations that Java gives you already. So yeah, let's just uh, keep in mind that this is collection. This is what we are going to use now. Now inside collection there are let me zoom it for you guys. Now inside collection there is all of these stuff that you can directly use. If you, you want to list kind of data, then you already have array list, link list, vector, stack. All of these data structures are predefined in Java, and you can directly use it as a data type. So if you want a queue, it's already predefined. Priority queue and the queue. If you want a set, it's already done. Hash chat link uh, link hash chat uh, hash set and then tree set. So all of these are already defined inside Java, and you can directly make use of it. So let's uh, you know use this and implement some data structure in, within Java. Now, it, uh, yeah, it is not core data structure concept. This is something that Java gives you in hand while coding, uh, so that you don't need to waste the time to write you know implement these data structures from scratch. Rather, you can just implement it as a data type. So to do that, first thing that we need to do is import java.utils again because all of these things are defined inside java.utils sorry not utils it is util and yeah okay now let's write our let's first use our first uh, you know uh, collection that we are going to learn today it's called let's start with array list so what is array list it's basically the same exact same thing as we learned in you know arrays it's the exact same thing but the only difference is now the size of the array will be defined during runtime not static run, not the static way that we have uh, seen till now jab aapko code compile karne se pehle hi pata tha ki array ka size itna hi hone wala hai because usi size ka apne define kara hai but when you use array list it can do all the things that an array can do but at the same time it, it, its size can be increased or decreased uh, during the runtime of the code so how do we do that the way you do that is uh, you just say list now just let, let's just say list and uh, let's declare a variable uh, for example it can be anything uh, my array is equal to new array list because we are trying to implement an array list and inside this uh, you pass nothing so this is how you define a list now let's say uh, i want to you know post something into it ab usme aap ek cheez notice kar rahe ho humne koi size hi nahi pass kara because we don't need to pass a size into an array list it is dynamic if we can change its size any time it want we can want to increase it we can decrease it it's totally up to us so that is why we do not pass any number into it because its size is dynamic it is not fixed hence we don't declare it during run time during de declare it during compile time agar maan lo ab mujhe apne list mein koi ek value input karni hai how do i do that all i have to say is my array dot add and i can literally pass anything let's say i pass by name now this works fine now here's the problem it will accept everything abhi tak humne arrays mein dekha tha agar humne integer type ki array banayi hai to it will you can only store integer agar humne float type ki banayi it will only type float but uh, now this is the weird thing about array list it can store everything and it works fine so we just stored a string and i also stored a what is this integer so let's also store a float now the way you store float is uh, one two point let's say four five now all of these will work fine if i compile the code you will see there is no error yeah no error pops up and there is no uh, display because we are not printing out anything yet so let's say if you want to print something let's say we want to print some particular value 
all you have to do is my my array dot get now within get you pass the index that you want to print so let's say i want to print the index zero and i also want to print my array dot uh, get uh, index one so let's execute this code and okay sorry about that i'm not printing it out So let me do the same thing for the uh, next <coughs> line as well. My input dot get and dot get. So if I now run the code, you can see that uh, it's working fine. It can store string and integer number as well. So how do we restrict that? How do we make sure that it is it can only store homogeneous data type, not all this heterogeneous like string and integer everything together. So the way you do that is while you declare your array within angular brackets, within angular brackets, pass the data type that you want to store it for. If I pass your int and during declaration after array list, you have to again specify the data type again so that that particular data type is created. Now it's showing an error. Now the reason is that, now the reason for uh, creation of this error is this, a this int is a primitive data type and Java is telling that this is going to be a problem if you want to implement it directly. So uh, what Java does is it provides something called wrapper classes. What are wrapper classes? So uh, all of these data types that we have studied till now, int, float, double, these are primitive data types. Primitive basically means it's a constant kind of data. It does not have any internal methods to oppose my utility provide for it. So for that, Java gives to you wrapper classes. Now, wrapper classes are nothing very complicated. Let's say if there is a uh, data type called int, so it's an equivalent wrapper data type. Bhi hai. Isko main integer bolunga. So if I write integer, internally it will be storing an int, int value, but at the same time, it can it also provide some certain you know functionalities on top of it. So let's look at this functionalities and also declare it of type integer. I'm going to do the same here. And if I pass integer, you will see that uh, this code is fine. But now error comes up here. This line is error, aara, is line is not error, this line is error. Because now we have fixed integer ke liye fix kar diya. So string cannot be accepted. Let's comment that out. Float cannot be accepted. So let's comment that out as well. And let's write this lines few more times okay uh, and now if i run this code you will see that uh, it can only store integers and if i write anything else if i try to print uh, you know enter some float value it will get an exception that uh, this is an exception thread of type you know uncompa uncompatible input types because this is a float value and cannot be stored so having discussed that uh, what are floats now uh, what are uh, you know array lists now comes the next problem that you want to print everything that exists inside your array ab pichle baar tak easy tha because array mein aapko pata tha ki array ki size kya hai kyunki aapko compilation time pe declare kar dete ho so hum directly likh rahe the while i less than 50 but now we cannot do that because we have no idea how many values are added because this is decided during runtime so how do you print all the values without knowing the size of the array so iske liye uh, Java ek function provide karta hai. Uh, this function is provided inside list class. So first of all, write while and inside while, uh, what you have to do is you have to say, okay, uh, before, before looping, we should know something called iterator. So jaise paaki ke arrays mein kya hota tha ki hum directly square brackets ke beech value dalte hain, wo access ho jata hai and wahan pe hum size bhi hume pehle se pata rehta tha. But that is not the case in terms of uh, you know, array lists because it is dynamically created. So in order to do that, Java provides you something called iterators. What iterator does is it, it, it is going to keep a track of the loop control variable. So let's create an iterator. I will say iterator. Okay. So the data type that I'm going to use is going to be of type iterator. Now inside iterator, I'm going to say and give, give it a name. Let's say itr. And I'll say new. Uh, now 
you have to assign it certain value. So I want to iterate over this array, array list called my ARR. So I'll say my ARR dot iterator. So I guess I have done something wrong here and that's why it's giving me an error. Uh, create iterator and package my array. Okay. That is weird. Integer. Okay, still doesn't work. So let's try something different. My AR dot. Okay, there are no inputs pressed already. Never mind. <clears throat> so uh, how do we implement uh, an iterator? within itr and then we want to travel inside of it so to do that java as we already saw that i it, it's providing you an iterator class uh but also at the same time you can see that we cannot just use the keyword iterator to you know uh, iterate through your java variable so how do we uh you know uh create an iterator and then use it to actually uh, you know travel through this entire array a variable so let's again do that but with uh, now this time we are also going to pass it the variable that we are using so for that all i'm going to do is i'll say integer and it this should work fine and all i have to do is now use syntax error okay now i'm going to use sorry i have to give it a variable name itr and all i will do inside it is now i will directly assign it the first value of my arr so i'll say my arr dot iterator that's it that's all i need to do and yeah so now itr is you know having the reference to the first value in the array, array list my arr now let's say i want to you know, print all the values inside my ARR. So all I have to do is, you know, run the loop till itr dot has next. So has next, I, I guess it already makes sense. Like its name is making sense until a next value is present. Keep uh, keep looping around, you know, keep keep the loop cont uh, continuing. And inside it, all I have to do is, uh, you know, uh, what I want to do, I want to print the value inside my ARR. So all I have to say is my array dot print ln. And inside here, I'll say itr dot next. If I'm not wrong, this is the syntax. I hope. Okay, yeah, this is the syntax. So what it's doing is uh, we have created a reference to the first uh, first iterator or the first value in uh, the array my arr array list. Then we are continuing the loop till there is some next value present. So that is what itr dot has next does. After that, if there is a next value present, then print the next value. If I now run this code, you will see that uh, okay, there is some error in some line. Okay, wait. Conditionals of Java line number 28. And that would be yeah. So yeah, I uh, basically one uh, curly braces was missing. It's done now let me just refactor the code to shift control f yeah now let's run the code so you can see that all the values inside my ARR are printed now similarly uh, java also provides you other than a uh, list and array list as we saw in this presentation that there are different like different things like vector there is something called tree set and there is something called in a nutshell uh, there is no difference between vector and you know array all i have to do is here instead of where is it instead of list i'll say yeah list is going to be list here instead of declaring it array list i'll make it vector and you'll see that uh, nothing changes the code works fine as it is it still works fine uh, so th basically there is no uh significant difference between vector and array list the only difference is that uh, this one is synchronized and array list is not coming to synchronized in a bit what is synchronized and all so for now you can assume that there is no practical difference between vector and 
uh, array list. Now there comes another type called hash set. Yeah. And for hash set, now you can see that there is an out uh, dip problem because had a list was working fine for array list and vector. That is because a vector and array list belong to the type list, but hash set belongs to set type. So I have to have to change it here as a set here. Now this code is fine. Now the, uh, the difference between uh, array list and vector and set and all that is that uh, all of these can store the value. But the problem is a uh, list can store any number of values, even if they're duplicate. But set does not store duplicate values. It only prints, uh, it only stores the value that are unique. That is what hash set does. Internally, what uh, hash uh, stands here for is hashing. It is hashing the value that we are entering into, uh, you know, inserting into the array. Now, hashing is unique for every number. So every number has a unique hash. Since 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we are assigning it again and again, again and again. So uh, basically, uh, every time the hash code will be same, but because we are inserting the same thing, and hence, uh, uh, yeah, and hence it will only take one input. So the basic difference between hash set and uh, array list is that array list can contain duplicate values, but hash set cannot. So now if I run this code, and you will see that only one number is printed, because that because even though we are entering five numbers, it will only store one because it only stores unique number. Let's say when I change one of this number and I'll change it here again. Now you can see that I'm entering two unique number. I'm entering one, two, three, four, three times and one, two, three, two times. So I'm entering two unique numbers in total, but uh, overall they are five numbers, but they're duplicates. So now if I uh, check that out, you will see that only two numbers are printed out. This is because hash set inherently only stores numbers that are unique. So that is about set in a nutshell. And then, then there is something called tree set. Uh, linked, linked has set, these are basically the same things, but with different implementations, different, uh, techno, uh, you know, uh, in the data structure, they are stored differently. You can try out all of these, but these are basic data structures and hence I'm not showing the demonstration. Uh, we saw what is has set and now let's see what is tree set. So uh, tree set, what it does is it, it is exactly same like what hash set does but other than that, what it does is it, it is going to sort the values out. For example, here, 1, 2, 3, 4 is stored first and then 1, 2, 3 is printed. But the problem is 1, 2, 3 is a smaller number. So what if you want to create an array, which is only unique values store, karta ho, but at the same time, those values are sorted format, mein sort, you know, store. Karta ho. You want everything to be sorted. So if you want everything to be sorted by default, then you, we are going to need a tree set. So uh, that data type is going to be set, but here while creating it, I will say preset. And now if I run the same code again, you can see that one, two, three is printed first because preset stores everything in sorted order. So that is all about a uh, collection framework. We uh, saw the most important ones, array list, vector, preset, and hash set. And there is also something called hash map. What it allows you to do is, you know, it allows you to create your own index rather than 0, 1, 2, all that kind of thing. So with that being said, uh, let's move on to the most important aspect of Java, that is object-oriented programming. Let's try to wrap that up in this session as well. And for that, I'll create another, you know, class. I'll name it. Let's for that create another package itself. New uh package i name it something like com dot oops and inside here i'll create a class i'll name it my first class uh so i'll name it my class Chica. and yeah let's do that so we just created a public class my class now uh, what is object-oriented programming? To tell you what is object-oriented programming, basically, uh, abhi tak hum variables, uh, no, you know, jo data type hume Java provide kar hum, wahi use kar rahe integer, float, hash sets, tree sets. But what if we want to create some data type of our own? Let's say we want to, I want to create a data type human, and human can do lots of stuff, right? Human is a real-world object. Hai. Agar usko main ek program mein, you know, represent karna chahta hon, then mujhe kuch special values It should have some special values. It should be able to do some special functions. 
So these functions are called methods. Functions are called methods. Whatever you can do, these are called methods, some adjective that you can do. And whatever you have, some attribute or properties, those are called um, member, uh, member, wait, yeah. <clears throat> okay, these are called class members. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, it's called class members. And these are called member methods. So all the all the things that you can do, for example, let's say that we are writing a program that represents a, a you know, a human. So everything that the human can do is going to be called a method. For example, talk, for example, sit, stand, walk. Those are called uh, methods. Now, everything that the human has will be stored as members. For example, the name. Name is an attribute, a property which usko belong to hai. So usko hum as a variable store kar sakte hai. So to make tarah se maan sakte ho, variable hai aur ye function hai. So let's see how to do that. So or we have already created a class called my class. And now what we are going to do is before that, let's uh, create an, another class inside. Oops. I'll name it. Sorry, uh, my bad. I clicked on package new and I want it to be a class called, let's say, what can we call it? Hero, uh, no, human. So I want to create a class human. So let's do that. Now inside class human, uh, let's say that this human has a name. So it's going to be a string name. Other than that, it, it should be able to do something. So before that, <clears throat> let's define something like public void talk. So guys, this is how you declare a function in Java. Uh, now let's I'll, I'll walk you I will give you a quick over, uh, you know walk through why we are writing public here public basically means that this function should be uh, able to use I mean uh, is um, is use your talk function eh? we should be able to access it from outside the class that is why I'm defining public now the benefit of uh, def defining public I'll show you in the code give me two minutes before that I'm also writing void the reason that I'm writing void is that this function is return nahi karne wala. Ye simply kuch ek print karay, ek value print karay. So inside this, let's print something system dot out dot print ln and I'll print something like yeah I am talking. Okay. And yeah, so we defined a function and we defined a variable inside our class. Now this variable is called uh, member for you know member class sorry class member and uh, this function the function that we have declared is called member method but the uh, object oriented programming in terms of is a member methods board okay and other than that uh, now let's come back to the my class Java so my class Java and human dot Java are inside the same package or we can say the same folder so now here's the you know uh, guys the uh, like power of object oriented programming i just created a class called human now i can use that in a data type in my different function here so if i say public uh, void me uh, you know public static void mean and uh, it's going to be string args it's totally optional string args hamesha likhna zaruri nahi hota hai and let's say I want, uh, I can directly use human as an object here, h1. So I can do that. I can use human as a data type now. So how cool is that? Uh, just with one data type, you can actually represent this entire class. And that is what object oriented programming helps you do. It's allowing you to organize your data types to your specific needs. You can customize your data types. That is what object oriented programming helps you do. So now let's say Mujhe basically a uh, string value store karni thi aur uske saath ek function associate karna tha wo main pehle nahi kar pata agar ye koi procedure oriented programming hota but now i can do that because class human is declared it has its own function it has its own name now i can just create an object of class human by using something like this but yahan pe humne sirf declare kara humne new object create nahi kara so how do we assign some value to it all we have to do is i have to write new and then the class name again and you know empty brackets for now, let's keep it empty brackets. And everything that you have defined within the de defined within the class, for example, name and this function talk, you can access it by using the dot operator. So 
I will h one dot new. I will assign it some value like uh, let's say the viso, and let's say I want to print out the value. Uh, print out. Uh, you know, I want to print out this value. So for that, I'll have to call this function talk. So how do I call a function that belongs to a uh, object of a class? I can do that by just saying t one dot talk. So as simple as that, we just created a variable which is of type human, which we have declared. And since we have declared this data type, that is why classes are also known as user defined data type. Okay, guys, do you have any doubts still here? Do put in the chat because right now we have just started object oriented programming. If you have any doubts, do feel free to put in the chat ASAP. Or, 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 or if there is no doubt, we will do you know do some inheritance and then interfaces. So that will cover most of the object oriented programming that you need for your NCFs. So, what is float in wrapper class? <clears throat> float in wrapper class is basically <clears throat> all you have to do just uh, you know um, capitalize the first letter. So, if I write float here, that is a wrapper class, and I, I can assign it some value. Let's say ten point seven f, and that's it. But now the or, you know, you might be thinking that uh, what's the difference between defining it like simple float and then as a wrapper class float. The difference is that now this f, after that, let's uh, declare float f1, which is a simple primitive data type. Okay. So f is a, f1 is a simple primitive data type. f is a uh, variable of the wrapper class float. Now, the thing is, if I write f1 dot, it literally has no utility method uske andar koi inbuilt method nahi hai jisse main kuch kaam easily kar saku but if i write f dot you can see there are lots of different uh, things that i can do now i can convert it to a string i can convert it to hexadecimal i can uh, use you know the sum sum function i can use a uh, byte value compare it to something double value float value get class hash code lots of different internals that i can use now and this is possible because of uh, wrapper data types. So wrapper class, what they do is they take a simple data type and they provide as useful methods on top of that. Polymorphism and encapsulation. Yeah, polymorphism and encapsulation, everything I'm going to do <laughs> with object-oriented programming. So right now, what we have done is basically we have created a class human and we have assigned it a name and we have uh, called one of its functions. So if I run this code, you can see that it's working just fine and it's calling the function which was defined in the other class. So what if, uh, yeah, what if I want to, let's, uh, let's do something interesting now. Uh, let's uh, define another class. Okay, before defining another class, let me teach you another concept, called, something called constructor. So what is a constructor? Basically, a your name variable here, if I uh, print it, you know, uh, before assigning some value to it, if I print the value of name, if I just say system dot out dot print ln, and I'll say, yeah, I'll say uh, h1 dot name. So I'm printing the value of h1 dot name. If I do that now, you will see it will only print a null value because it has no value. But if I write this value after uh, assigning some value to it, it will print the name. So what if you want to make sure that the moment you create a new human, it should have some default value. To do that uh, comes into the picture constructor. Constructor. So the way you define constructor is you use the same class name uh, as the name of the class. You declare a function by the same name like the class name exactly and this uh, keep in mind that this function should have no return type and uh, it should not even be void it should have no return type not even void okay and was define karna and inside this you can say this dot now the reason i am doing this is because jab hum isko uh, is uh, you know my class se call karte human h1 
तब जावा को पता है कि ठीक है एच वन को के लिए कॉल किया जा रहा है एंड वेन वी राइट डॉट नेम जावा नोज दैट एच वन इज कॉलिंग नेम बट वॉट अबाउट द क्लास इट सेल्फ क्लास इज नो आइडिया हु इज एक्सेसिंग इट नाउ फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर मैं एच वन के जैसे सिमिलरली एक और लाइन लिखता हूँ यहाँ पे लेट्स से एच टू नाउ जाओ दिस दिस पर्टिकुलर पीस ऑफ कोड नोज दैट एच वन एंड एच टू आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स बट वॉट अबाउट द क्लास क्लास इज जस्ट एन आइडिया इट्स अ ब्लू प्रिंट ऑफ हाउ द आर डेटा टाइप शुड लुक लाइक इट हैज नो आइडिया हु इज कॉलिंग इट सो हेंस कम्स इन टू द प्ले दिस uh this tells a uh, class this operator is a operator in it's it's a keyword in java this basically tells uh the current class that this particular object is calling you so this ke andar basically aap jis ke through usko call kar rahe ho let's say h1 or h2 uska address hota hai so hence if i write this iske andar main use kar sakta hu name so using this jaise hum uh, you know once hum object create kar lete the h1 fir uske through hum uske name ko uh, you know assign karte the h1.name but within the class if you want to uh, you know uh, <coughs> assign some value to any variable or you want to call a function that is defined within the same class then you have to write this so main likhunga this dot name is equal to default name सो so, अभी मैंने एक कंस्ट्रक्टर के अंदर एक डिफॉल्ट नेम असाइन कर दिया एंड गाइस यू माइट बी थिंकिंग यहाँ पे हमने ह्यूमन डिफाइन कर दिया बट इफ इसको कॉल भी तो करना पड़ेगा एक फंक्शन है अगर उसको कॉल नहीं करेंगे तो उसका पॉइंट क्या है है ना जब पिछले बार हमने टॉक लिखा था उसको कॉल करने के बाद ही वो उसका वैल्यू प्रिंट करता था बट कंस्ट्रक्टर अ कंस्ट्रक्टर इज समथिंग दैट इज कॉल्ड बाई डिफॉल्ट द मोमेंट एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज क्रिएटेड एज यू कैन सी य as you can see here the moment i'm writing human h1 is equal to new human you can see that the constructor is being called here it's the constructor that we are calling here so the moment the object is created the constructor is called by default so does that make sense to you if it makes uh, do ping in the chat uh, that this concept is clear to you meanwhile i'll execute the code so also if now before printing the value before assigning the value to it ठीक है पिछले बार जब हमने ये करा था जब हमने उसको कुछ वैल्यू असाइन करने से पहले हमने उसे प्रिंट कर दिया था यहाँ पे नल आई थी आउटपुट बट नाउ इफ आई प्रिंट यू डू दैट यू विल सी दैट इट्स प्रिंटिंग डिफॉल्ट नेम बिकॉज द मोमेंट एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज क्रिएटेड डिफॉल्ट नेम इज असाइन टू इट ओके जस्ट गिव मी अकेंड गाइज जस्ट गिव मी वन सेकेंड I hope everything is clear till now. If you have any doubt, you can ping in the comment section, guys. Guys, those who are uh, live with us, we will give the, you know, uh, this video will be the private from now. Okay, after this session, we will put this video, but we will give the access to all the students who are with us uh, till now. Okay, so you can you utilize this video uh, in your further studies. Is it clear, everyone? any other question if you have you can ask in the comment section or jibbe soon will also take a q and a at the end yeah definitely guys <clears throat> okay jibbe soon you can create oh, oh you can sure. continue sorry sorry you yeah can <laughs> yeah i got it <clears throat> okay guys just a second sure <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Guys, sorry about that. I was being called at my home. So now uh, let's uh, proceed with the next concept that is inheritance. So, guys, what is inheritance? Now, the, here comes another powerful concept of object-oriented programming. So, what is that powerful concept? Right now, we have seen that we can create a class. We created a class, and it uh, somehow it is not somehow it definitely reduced our pain. How is it reducing our pain? अगर हम क्लास नहीं क्रिएट करते तो हमें ह्यूमन के ये ये जो है ना ये पर्टिकुलर एक वेरिएबल के थ्रू हम नेम भी एक्सेस कर रहे हैं हमें फंक्शन को भी कॉल कर रहे हैं वी कुड डू दैट इन साइड आर क्लास वी कुड डू दैट बाई जस्ट वन लाइन बिकॉज हमने ये क्लास ह्यूमन को ऑलरेडी डिफाइन कर रखा है तो हमें हम सीधा एच वन के थ्रू हम एक स्ट्रिंग वेरिएबल भी एक्सेस कर रहे हैं हम फंक्शन भी डाल रहे हैं अगर हम क्लास यहाँ पे और कुछ डिफाइन करते हैं हम वो भी कर सकते थे सो लेट्स लेट मी डिफाइन समथिंग एल्स टू i name it walk and yeah i am walking 
Okay, so now comes another important part. Uh, what if uh, you want to expand this class human? So the way you do that is यहाँ तक हमने देखा कि हमारे यहाँ पे कोड लिखने का यू नो लाइन्स रिड्यूस हो रहे थे बट जस्ट यूजिंग वन लाइन वी कूड इम्प्लीमेंट दिस इंटायर कंसेप्ट फॉर एस बट नाउ वॉट इफ वी वॉन्ट टू राइट इवन लेस एंड वी वॉन्ट टू री यूटिलाइज आर कोड तो इसके लिए इसको समझने के लिए एक और डेमो फंक्शन एक और डेमो क्लास बनाते हैं आई नेम इट ह्यूमन से कौन इनहेरिट कर सकता है लेट से बेबी सो देर अ बेबी बेबी इज टू चीजी लेट्स कॉल इट किडो सो Let's create a class kiddo, and inside class kiddo, what I will say is, okay, so this is how you do inheritance in Java. So how to do inheritance in Java? Uh, basically, let's first understand what is inheritance at first place. So we have a class human made, which we have used straightly. बट नाउ अब हमारी नीड ऐसी है कि हमें एक ऐसा डेटा टाइप बनाना है जिसके पास ये ह्यूमन के सारे की सारी फंक्शनैलिटीज़ हों उसके पास एक आ, अपना वे, आ, वेरिएबल और नेम उसके पास एक डिफॉल्ट कंस्ट्रक्टर भी होना चाहिए उसके पास टॉक फंक्शन भी होना चाहिए और वॉक फंक्शन भी होना चाहिए बट अदर दैट वी ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रोवाइज दैट आई मीन इसके ऊपर आपको अपना भी कुछ एक्स्ट्रा यू नो सम एक्स्ट्रा फंक्शनैलिटी या वेरिएबल यूज़ करना है बट हम ये डायरेक्टली तो कर ही नहीं सकते क्योंकि वंस हम ह्यूमन एच वन लिखते हैं उसके अंदर हम सिर्फ यही चीज़ों को कर सकते हैं टॉक एंड वॉक एज वेल बट अदर देन दैट वी वांट टू मेक श्योर कि इसके अंदर कुछ एक्स्ट्रा फंक्शनैलिटी हो जो हम सीधा ह्यूमन कॉल करने पे यूज़ करते हैं सो हियर कम्स इन टू द प्ले हियर कम्स इन टू द पिक्चर इनहेरिटेंस सो द वे यू डू इनहेरिटेंस इज बेसिकली वेन यू डिक्लेयर योर क्लास पब्लिक क्लास किडो यू कैन से एक्सटेंड्स ह्यूमन Now what extends does is ये एक ह्यूमन क्लास का एक्सटेंशन होने वाला है उसका किड मान सकते हो उसका किड है किड मीन्स इट्स बेबी दैट इज वाई इट्स कॉल्ड इनहेरिटेंस वो उसकी प्रॉपर्टीज को इनहेरिट करेगा और इन अदर टर्म्स ये क्लास ह्यूमन को एक्सटेंड करेगा और उसके ऊपर अपनी फंक्शनैलिटीज डालेगा सो लेट से इनिशियली मैं इस यहाँ पे एम टी छोड़ देता हूँ ठीक है इसको मैं एम टी छोड़ूंगा और अभी करेंटली मैं इसको किडो बोलूँगा आई से किडो एच वन इज इक्वल टू न्यू किडो ओके सो दैट्स डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू बी अ प्रॉब्लम एंड वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम दीज आर इन द सेम फाइल एज फेल माई क्लास डॉट जावा किडो एच वन एंड ओके इट्स ऑडिटिटी फाइंड क्लास कॉम डॉट ऊप्स Okay, wait. I guess I uh, <coughs> know what this problem is occurring. Let's net and see the error. Kiddo cannot be resolved through a type. So right now it says that kiddo is not a class, and the reason that this is happening is currently kiddo is empty. So it's make choti si constructor hi dalke dekhte hain. ठीक है? ऐसे डालते हैं एक class constructor and within this class constructor right now we are not going to define anything okay sorry about that uh my bad this is why the error was being created uh my bad maine yahan pe k ka value small likha tha and that is why this error was being created so nothing very fancy this happens to me i do a lot of spelling mistakes uh so yahan pe jab hum log isko call kar rahe hain now we'll see that we can just call kiddo H1 and now you can see that kiddo H1 is empty. It has literally no definition inside it. But uh, still, uh, we can create a class kiddo H1 and now we can see that kiddo can that now H1 is a type of kiddo. Uh, kiddo. So now let's see if talk and walk are working inside it. Yeah, works fine. It is working just fine as expected. Or now you might ask how it is happening. Kiddo is empty from inside, but still it is able to. inherit and do that so the reason is that it is inheriting it is inheriting class human so class human ke paas jo bhi functionalities the everything uh, the kiddo can do on top of that you can add your own functionalities so let's add something here public void uh, you know uh, let's say 
a kiddo can crawl. So I'll add a um, function called crawl. And inside this, I will say, copy paste this. Okay. Inside this, I'll say, yeah, I am crawling. Okay, so now let's see what's happened. What's happened? So uh, I can now say h1 dot crawl, and it will work fine. If I now execute the code, you can see that everything is working fine. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm walking. Yeah, I'm crawling. And how is this happening? Because kiddo, apne bhi kuch ex, ex, you know ex, uh, <coughs> ex, extra functionalities provide karta hai, and it also uses everything that class human provides, and that is what extends mean. Extend the original definition already present and then add something to it and that is what inheritance does so now you can see that we created a different data type which already has everything that class human uh, allows us to do and on top of that we can have our own functionalities so that is another advantage of uh, object oriented programming lines of code are reduced it is reducing redundancy abhi mein bar bar human ke andar hame ye sab likhna nahi pad raha theek hai अब आते हैं एक और इम्पॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट पे बट बिफोर दैट अनदर डेमो नाउ यू कैन सी दैट क्लास किडो इज एबल टू एक्सेस एवरीथिंग बट ह्यूमन ह्यूमन के पास अभी भी क्रॉल का फंक्शनैलिटी नहीं है क्रॉल का फंक्शनैलिटी सिर्फ क्लास किडो के पास है क्योंकि उसने ह्यूमन को एक्सटेंड करके उसके ऊपर अपने एक्स्ट्रा फंक्शनैलिटी दिया है बट डैट डजेंट मीन कि वो ह्यूमन का डेफिनेशन चेंज कर रहा है ह्यूमन का डेफिनेशन वही है जो पहले था सो नाउ इन माई क्लास इफ आई वुड राइट H2 dot crawl, it is going to be a error, and why is it going to be an error? Because H2 के पास कोई crawl function नहीं है, वो सिर्फ और सिर्फ exclusively kiddo को belong करता है, because kiddo ने उसको define करा है human को extend करके, human के पास definition अभी भी वही है जो उसके पास पहले था, ठीक है? I hope that makes sense, and if I make uh, you know keep my array on it, it will say this method crawl is undefined for type human. So now let's uh, look at another important aspect. What if ह्यूमन ने कुछ काम कर रखा था ह्यूमन ने टॉक डिफाइन कर रखा है वॉक डिफाइन कर रखा है बट ओके किडो ने uh, कुछ चीजों को डिफाइन कर रखा है यू नो टॉक सॉरी ह्यूमन ने टॉक एंड वॉक डिफाइन कर रखा है एंड किडो ने उसके ऊपर एक एक्स्ट्रा uh, मेथड डाला है बट गाइज वॉट इफ आई राइट या पब्लिक वॉइड I will write the same function that human provides us. So human is providing us two functions, walk and talk, and kiddo has access to it as it is extending class human. Now inside public void kiddo, I'm going to define a function public void uh, talk, and other than that, I'm going to do this. And okay, now what's happening here is. it's a, it's a, it's a concept called method overriding it's called method overriding okay now theoretically what this means is that whatever method this uh, functions are called methods in object oriented programming so whatever methods this class um, human was providing to you you can override it you can override its override and change its definition uh, i'm not telling ki aap log human ki definition change kar rahe ho but within kiddo if uh, this function is used in that context you can change its definition so uh, if someone calls uh, that function talk from class kiddo let's uh, give an output that kiddos can talk theek hai because bachche baat nahi kar sakte in a very initial stage theek hai they cannot speak so now uh, here let's see human ke andar bhi ek talk function hai and kiddo is extending human so uske andar automatically a talk function aa jata hai but other than that humne uske andar fir se talk function ko define kar diya so this technique is called method overriding and let's see what technically it means so main baki sab kisi function ko call nahi karunga main simple cheez karunga uh, h1 kiddo ko belong karta hai h2 is of type human so if i write now h2 dot talk you will see that it prints the exact same thing what human defines yeah i am talking let me also comment out this values so that it makes sense uh, it gives some sensible output i am talking now what if i call h1 dot talk so we already know that h1 is of type kiddo and kiddo has overridden the definition of talk so now if i call it 
you will see that it will say kiddos cannot talk so that is another uh, powerful uh, core logic provided by object oriented programming it allows you to override a particular method dekho iska fayda ye hai ki this talk with the name of the function is going to be same but if uh, the class human is going to call it it will print a different output and if class kiddo is going to call it it will print a different output so using the same function name we are providing two different functionalities and that is what uh, this method overriding implements a concept called so i know this sounds confusing uh, the thing that we are doing here the technique that we are using is called method overriding but method overriding ke through humne same function ka do do definition define kar diya right ek definition pe print hua i am talking ek definition pe print hua kiddos can talk so using the same function name by overriding it we are providing two different definitions to it and that concept is called polymorphism as someone in the chat was asking what is polymorphism this is polymorphism using uh, the same thing you are assigning two different meanings to it you are assigning two different contexts to it and okay so uh, i will quickly tell you what is overriding again as there is a doubt overriding basically means if there is something in the parent class parent class means the one which you are inheriting and there is some met function th that goes by the name talk and then in the class which is inheriting it you are defining that function again so basically you are changing the definition that um, talk can do so you are changing its definition which the uh, parent class was providing and this technique is called method overriding and this concept of providing the same functionality kyunki abhi agar kisi ne kiddo class ka object create karke talk ko call karta hai to kiddos cannot talk print hota but agar koi human class se same cheez karta hai then yeah i am talking print hota so basically yeah. within the same function yeah. okay, sorry about that basically within the same function we are providing two different definitions and that this concept is called polymorphism so i hope this uh, makes sense to you uh, if you have any doubts in here do ping in the chat and give me one second guys yeah okay uh sorry about that so we will be we discussed about overriding i guess that is clear to everyone right now and now comes the uh, another concept called abstract classes and this is a part of data abstraction in java so what is abstract so uh, assume karte hain ki <clears throat> a public class kiddo has some function jiska main pata nahi kaise kaam karta hai for example um, we don't know um let's say something that we don't know let's write a function jiska mein definition pata hi nahi hai i will call it public void uh, unknown i'll name the function u n k n o w n i name the function unknown and isko main koi definition provide nahi karunga or i can just keep it empty like that now uh since i'm not defining it main isko aise khali to nahi chhod sakta if i do that agar main isko aise khali chhod dun aur main isko yahan se call karu एच वन डॉट अन नो कुछ होगा और uh, नहीं कुछ प्रिंट ही नहीं होगा कुछ होगा ही नहीं फंक्शनैलिटी बिकॉज वो खाली है बट एज वी डोंट वॉन्ट दिस टू हैपन अगर हमने किसी फंक्शन को डिफाइन नहीं करा है वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट टू बी कॉल्ड हमें नहीं चाहते कि हम चाहते हैं कि वो हिडन रहे अनटिल इट इज डिफाइंड सो यहाँ पे एक की वर्ड आता है एबस्ट्रैक्ट वट एबस्ट्रैक्ट अलाउज यू टू डू इज सॉरी आप मैंने एम टी ब्रैकेट दिया आप सेमी कॉलन दे सकते हैं आपको सो वॉट ओके सो इफ यू हैव टू डिफाइन एनी थिंग एबस्ट्रैक्ट सबसे पहली कंडीशन ये है कि पूरा पूरा का पूरा क्लास एबस्ट्रैक्ट होना चाहिए ठीक है आपको क्लास के ऊपर ही डिफाइन करना है दैट दिस इज एन एबस्ट्रैक्ट क्लास अब एबस्ट्रैक्ट डिफाइन करने के कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट साइड इफेक्ट भी होते हैं now you can define an empty function aap ek function ko empty chhod sakte ho it's totally up to you aap baad mein define kar sakte ho but for now this is empty we will not provide a definition and it will work fine 
बट वेन वी डू दैट वी हैव टू डिफाइन अ क्लास एब्सट्रैक्ट क्योंकि जावो को पता होना चाहिए कि इस क्लास के अंदर एक फंक्शन है जिसका डेफिनेशन एग्जिस्ट नहीं करता इन दैट केस आपको जावा को पहले से ही बताना है कि ये एक एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लास है अब एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लास के कुछ वो भी होता है साइड इफेक्ट्स वेन यू डिफाइन अ क्लास एब्सट्रैक्ट उस क्लास का ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएट नहीं हो सकता बिकॉज इसके अंदर एक अनडिफाइंड फंक्शन है अगर किसी तरह इस क्लास का ऑब्जेक्ट बन जाता है और किसी ने अननोन को कॉल कर दिया तो इसका कोई डेफिनेशन ही नहीं है या तो प्रोग्राम हटक जाएगा या कुछ प्रिंट नहीं होगा सो इंस्टेंटली यू कैन सी दैट देर इज एन एरर इन दिस लाइन एच वन दिस इज बिकॉज कैन नॉट इन द एर यू कैन इफ यू कैन आई एम नॉट श्योर इट इज रीडेबल टू यू इट इज रिटर्न कैन नॉट इंस्टेंशिएट द टाइप किडो नाउ इट बेसिकली मीन्स दैट इस क्लास किडो का कोई ऑब्जेक्ट बन ही नहीं सकता बिकॉज इट इज एन एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लास एब्सट्रैक्ट मीन्स एन आइडिया that is yet to be implemented like in english basically abstract definition kya hai in english dictionary basically means an idea so ye sirf ek idea hai isko hum log object create nahi kar sakte hai and that is why this line is causing an error that the object cannot be created or cannot instantiate the type kiddo so to see that in perspective um, if i run the code you will also get an error that unresolved compilation time uh cannot instantiate the type kiddo it basically telling that type kiddo ki object create nahi ho sakti so then what is the point of defining it abstract how do we use a, uh, something that is abstract so to define that ek second main yahan se abstract hata deta hu so that hum kiddo ko use kar sake and what i'm going to do is i'm going to define the same line inside class human so inside human i'm going to define abstract public void unknown and mai abhi class human ko abstract declare kar dunga ab isme aapko ek cheez dikhega ki my class mein ab hum human ka object create nahi kar sakte so let's uh, you know comment out class human ke all the references so basically the point is now uh, we cannot create an object of class human because we have defined it uh, as you can see abstract so वॉट इज द पॉइंट ऑफ डिफाइनिंग इट एब्सट्रैक्ट अगर हम इसको यूज ही नहीं कर पा रहे द पॉइंट इज इस क्लास का ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएट नहीं हो सकता बट वो इनहेरिट हो सकता है सो यहाँ पे वो इनहेरिट हो रहा है एक्सटेंड्स ह्यूमन बट यहाँ पे आपको एक एरर दिख रही है क्लास में द रीजन इज ह्यूमन एक एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लास है इसमें एक अनडिफाइंड फंक्शन है अननोन अगर आप इसको इनहेरिट करते हो तो जो चाइल्ड क्लास है जो इसको इनहेरिट कर रही है ये उसका रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी होगा कि वो ये इस अनडिफाइंड फंक्शन को एक डेफिनेशन प्रोवाइड करे सो नाउ यू हैव टू प्रोवाइड अ डेफिनेशन टू द अनडिफाइंड फंक्शन एंड दैट इज द कोर लॉजिक बिहाइंड एब्सट्रैक्ट आपको नहीं पता ये फंक्शन कैसे एग्जिस्ट करता है या फिर आपको एग्जैक्टली नहीं पता कि इसकी क्या यूज है बट इफ एनी क्लास इनहेरिट्स इट देन दैट क्लास हैज टू प्रोवाइड अ डेफिनेशन टू दैट फंक्शन दैट इज वाई वी डिफाइन इट एब्सट्रैक्ट so now inside a uh, class kiddo as it is inheriting class human this has to provide a definition provide a definition to the abstract function provide a definition to the abstract function so now let's provide a definition to that i will just say public void um kya naam tha uska unknown system dot out dot print and then un <coughs> unknown function is now defined okay so what's happening here now so what we just did and the moment we define the function you can see that this error is gone jo pehle aata tha now the mo- the reason that abhi koi error nahi ho raha because human abstract type ka tha the reason that this was abstract is iske paas ek undefined function thi usliye hum isko object create nahi kar sakte hum isko instantiate nahi kar sakte but when we inherit it and then we provided a definition to it so now uh, what we are doing is we provided a definition to an abstract method and now uh, <clears throat> yeah okay. and now uh, if we uh, call h1.unknown now it will execute you can see unknown function here whatever hum usme likha tha wo execute ho raha hai so that is the core logic behind uh, abstract and the abstract keyword why it exists abstract versus exception okay so someone in the doubt is asking what is abstract and how is it different from exception so actually they have uh, no uh, you know a relation abstract and exception are completely different thing 
things let's uh, see that with an example so hamare my class java my class java mein theek hai ab iske andar main kya karunga i am going to print out something system dot out dot uh, print ln i'm going to say 100 uh, divided by 0 theek hai and iske baad main ek aur line likhunga system dot out dot print ln uh, i won't be printed theek hai so aisa maine kyun likha hai why have i written i won't be printed the reason is that uh, let me minimize this so that it's readable for you guys okay now the reason that uh, <coughs> i have written i won't be printed is this line pe error aayegi 100 by 0 is not a defined number it is infinity and it is going to create a mathematical error in java aur is line mein error aayega aur program ruk jayega so if i now execute it you will see that this line which said i won't be printed is never printed because line number um line number 16 that is this particular line jisme humne 16 se divide kara वहीं पे एरर आ रही है एंड द एरर इज कॉल्ड एरिथमेटिक एक्सेप्शन सो व्हाट इज एन एक्सेप्शन एक्सेप्शन इज बेसिकली अगर एक अननेचुरल एक अनएक्सपेक्टेड सिचुएशन हो जाती है एंड वहीं पे प्रोग्राम स्टॉप हो जाता है उसको बोलते हैं एक्सेप्शन क्योंकि अगर किसी लाइन में एक्सेप्शन है तो उसके आगे जाने का कोई पॉइंट नहीं है बिकॉज इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क फाइन क्योंकि ऑलरेडी एक एरर हो चुकी है द प्रोग्राम इज स्टक सो हाउ डू वी मेक श्योर दैट ये तो सिंपल सी एरर हमें दिख रही है एक 1000 लाइन के कोड में हमें कैसे पता होगा हाउ विल वी हैव एनी आइडिया दैट एनी लाइन मे जनरेट एन एरर सो टू डू दैट कम्स इन टू द पिक्चर इन कॉल्ड एक्सेप्शन हैंडलिंग सो इट इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट दैट वी आर कवरिंग टुडे एक्सेप्शनल एक्सेप्शन हैंडलिंग सो हाउ डू हैंडल एन एक्सेप्शन बेसिकली जिस भी लाइन में आपको थोड़ा सा भी डाउट है कि दिस माइट यू नो कॉज एन एक्सेप्शन you know encapsulate that line within a try block so what is a try block try block basically says ki yaar is is line mein tumko doubt hai koi baat nahi try ke andar define kar do agar isme koi error aata hai to dekh lenge program ko stop nahi karenge isko ek trial method mein work karenge like an experiment you can just think like try ke andar tum jo bhi likh do wo ek experimental way mein run karta hai agar error aati hai to aage continue kar lega agar error nahi aati hai to as it is run kar dega so ab try mein problem aata hai वी नो दैट ट्राई के अंदर अगर एरर आ जाती है इट बेसिकली मीन्स इसमें कुछ एरर हुआ है सो अगर एरर हुआ है हमें उसे हैंडल करना पड़ेगा ठीक है हम उसे छोड़ तो नहीं सकता छोड़ देते तो ऑब्वियसली प्रोग्राम अटक यहीं पर स्टक हो जाएगा सो उसको हैंडल करने के लिए देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड कैच नाउ वॉट इज अ कैच बेसिकली अगर ट्राई के अंदर जो भी लाइन हमने लिखा है अगर उसमें कुछ भी एरर आती है सो वो सीधा आके कैच फंक्शन के अंदर आ जाएगा अब कैच में आपको एक वेरिएबल पास करना पड़ता है या फिर एक आर्ग्यूमेंट बोल सकते हो नाउ दैट आर्ग्यूमेंट इज गोइंग टू बी ऑफ टाइप एक्सेप्शन वाई एक्सेप्शन बिकॉज ये जो लाइन है दिस लाइन एज यू कैन सी इन द एर यू कैन सी इट सेल्फ दैट दिस लाइन जनरेट्स एन एक्सेप्शन एज यू कैन सी इट्स जेनरेटिंग एन एक्सेप्शन सो उसी लिए द आउटपुट दैट दिस लाइन जनरेट्स इन केस यहाँ पे एर आ गया सो इट जनरेट्स एन आउटपुट ऑफ टाइप एक्सेप्शन and hence you have to define inside after a try block we have to define a catch block which should take an exception type of input and then we can just say system dot out dot print ln print ln e so kuch nahi karunga jo bhi error aa raha hai basically main use print kar raha hu and after that i will also write another line system dot out dot print ln e uh, e basically means exception is now handled so ek chhota sa uh, confirmation message print kar denge so that from the console hame pata chale ki exception handle ho raha hai so now i'm going to run the code and on the left hand side you can see that the code didn't stop now uh aap dekh sakte ho ki is line ke baad jahan pe error aa rahi hai uske baad hum ek aur line execute kar rahe the and abhi agar uh, we can look at the console you can see that it is printing out what the error was because humne print kara hai pe error ko उसके बाद वो प्रिंट कर रहा है एक्सेप्शन इज नाउ हैंडल्ड ऑफ कोर्स इट वाज हैंडल्ड एंड नाउ इट आल्सो प्रिंटिंग द लाइन व्हिच शुड नॉट बी प्रिंटेड सो व्हाट इज बेसिकली डज इज ठीक है इस लाइन में एरर आया बट वी हैंडल्ड इट एंड वी मूव्ड पास्ट इट एंड वी डिड समथिंग एल्स अगर यहां पे एरर नहीं आता इफ आई वुड हैव रिटन 100 बाय 1 दिस लाइन इज परफेक्टली फाइन नाउ इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू क्रिएट एनी एरर सो इन दैट केस यू विल सी दैट 
कैच ब्लॉक के अंदर जो भी है वो प्रिंट नहीं होता एर प्रिंट नहीं हुआ एक्सेप्शन इज नाउ हैंडल प्रिंट नहीं हुआ सिंपली हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई वन हंड्रेड प्रिंट हो गया एंड दिस लाइन इज प्रिंटेड विच वॉज डिफाइंड आफ्टर इट सो दैट इज वॉट एक्सेप्शन एक्सेप्शन हैंडलिंग डस ट्राई के अंदर जो भी जिसमें लाइन में आपको डाउट है उसको वहीं पे लिख दो उसमें जो भी एरर आएगा आप इसको बाहर हैंडल कर सकते हो एंड दिस विल मेक श्योर दैट दिस योर प्रोग्राम वोट स्टॉप इट विल जस्ट हैंडल दैट एर एंड देन एग्जीक्यूट द नेक्स्ट लाइन ओके सो आई गेस गाइज टूडे वी हैव कवर्ड अ लॉट्स ऑफ कंसेप्ट एक्सेप्शन हैंडलिंग प्रोग्रामिंग पॉलीमोफिजम इनहेरिटेंस एंड All that stuff. So, if you guys have any doubt about some particular concept, because three hour ka course tha, this is for your benefit in any sense. If any particular concept you have for doubt, you can ping that in the chat so I can focus on that. Or other than that, all the basic foundation that you need for Java is already covered. So, if you need uh, help in some particular part, you can ping in the chat, or we can wrap up with the session, or you can ask your doubts. I think the Bishom it was great. So let's wrap up this session over here only. Okay, I will share the recording to the all the live attendees as well as those who have not attended today. This record, this session will be you know uh, not public for next twenty four hours. If anyone have any okay. doubt, they can ask on the Telegram guys. Uh, okay, if you want any other topic to cover, okay, so uh, ping us on uh, Telegram, है ना? Now I think okay. this okay, is I guess, guys. Uh, <laughs> ना, hours हो चुके हैं अभी तक content को करते करते तो दिव्य भी थक गया साथ के साथ ही पीछे से आपको कुत्ते की आवाज आ रही होगी ना उसके डॉगी को मतलब थोड़ा भूख लग रही है तो उसे खिलाना विलाना होता है तो इस वजह से ठीक है ओवरऑल वी हैव कवर ऑलमोस्ट ऑल दी कॉन्सेप्ट ठीक है इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यू कैन आस्क अब आज के लिए हो गया है बहुत ही ज्यादा ठीक है एक्सेस स्पेसिफायर हो गया था या दिव्य सम या वी हैव लेफ्ट विद एक्सेस स्पेसिफायर या एक्सेस स्पेसिफायर इज लेफ्ट ऐसे ऐसे हमने पब्लिक डिक्लेअर करा नो नो ठीक है एक के दो टॉपिक जो भी रह गए हैं है ना डोंट टेक टेंशन उसको हम कल 1.5 घंटे के 2 घंटे के सेशन में कवर कर लेंगे लेकिन जो भी टॉपिक रह गए पहली बात नहीं रह गए होंगे ठीक है दो तीन जो टॉपिक रह गए वो कवर कर लेंगे हम कल ठीक है तब तक के लिए जितना भी कर लिया है उसके नोट्स बना लो उसको तगड़ी तरीके से पढ़ लो ठीक है क्योंकि इस बार के एंसर में आप धूम मचाने वाले हो ठीक है एंड इफ यू यू गाइस हैव एनी अदर डाउट ठीक है तो टेलीग्राम चैनल ओपन है सबके लिए वहां पे जाके डाउट पिंग करो पूछो ठीक है एंड वंशी हमें भी पता कि यार कौन से टॉपिक रह गए एक्चुअली इट इज नाइन ओ क्लॉक एंड अभी बहुत ही सारा हो चुका है ठीक है ओके या दिस थी अ फ्यू टॉपिक्स दैट आर लेफ्ट जैसे स्टैटिक कीवर्ड हो गया एक्सेस स्पेसिफायर हो गया स्ट्रिंग क्लास और एक इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट मल्टी थ्रेडिंग इसको हम एक साथ एक और टू आवर्स के सेशन में रैप कर देंगे बाकी ऑल दिस फाउंडेशन आई गेस दिस इज क्लियर एंड आप अभी जावा का यू नो आगे प्रोसीड कर सकते हो वन क्योंकि आपके पास ये फाउंडेशन है अभी सो यू कैन आल्सो स्टडी इट ऑन योर ओन और आई आई विल आल्सो टीच दैट इन अ वेरी टू टू थ्री आवर्स क्लास बाय टुमारो ठीक है ओके गाइस आई थिंक दैट्स ऑल फॉर टुडे ओके लेट्स 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 ओके तो थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीवन है ना दिस दिस सेशन इज लाइव दिस सेशन इज पब्लिक फॉर नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स यू कैन वॉच एनी टाइम यू वॉन्ट नो 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 नीड टू से सॉरी ओके एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट एनी हेल्प फ्रॉम अस यू कैन आस्क ऑन टेलीग्राम एंड वी विल श्योरली सेंड ऑल दी फाइल्स वॉच वी हैव क्रिएटेड टूडे ओके ऑन दी टेलीग्राम चैनल ओनली Okay. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. It was a lovely session. It was a two time session for today. And look, yes, I will share all the files in the Telegram group. So please join the Telegram group. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice day. Study well. Keep supporting and keep sharing. Thank you. Okay, guys. Take care. Bye, bye.